Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Suited and Booted. I'm your host, Jorogba, to my left. Lord Mahazi. To my little right. Number 10. The it's number 10. Nickname, apparently. I didn't make that name up, by the way. Al <laughs> Blondie. I do like it, but Rashid, I've got to give uh, credit for. Can well, perfect with the blonde hair first day in yeah. number 10. Yeah, trying Fitting. something new. Hey, is it more Eminem or is it more I'm Brazilian? I would like to say Brazilian. So you got a Brazilian. Gav. Oh, sorry. To my far right. The CFO. The CFO. Which is probably, is he best on with his dress today? <laughs> you or would are say we, are so. Are we not having his kit? Yeah, you, you can't. No, I mean, I, love it. I really I love like it, it personally. I love it. You know, I can put yeah, anything on. I really fucking like it. And I'm going to pull it off. Man, for a white guy, he dresses so well. Sri Lankan. He's brown. Uh, yes. Um... Guys, <laughs> I'm going to need you to do me a favor, yeah? Stop what you're doing and go hit that five-star button on Spotify <laughs> real <laughs> quick. And then I want you to go to YouTube, man. I promise you, it'll take two seconds. You're just going to hit that subscribe button right there and hit that thumbs up, baby. Gang, bro. Gang, gang. Hey, those five stars are running up. Are they? Yeah, but 300 plus. We was like, ooh, just over 100 when we... Thanks, well, fellas. Thanks two weeks awesome. ago. Thanks yeah. for listening, guys. Yeah, so I That's appreciate awesome. it. Usually it just goes over people's head, but no, seriously, if you haven't done it, I hope you feel left out. So go do it right now, or else you're not a part of our gang. That's baby. it, join the community. Join the community, bro, because all the... You know, it matters. These little things, they matter when we try to uh, progress in oh, this yeah, thing. And we learned about the broadcast channel. We actually want to have a community yeah. channel, which most podcasts or sort of pages do have, but now they have a rule of getting to 10K followers. Yeah. I also think there's some other issue that we need to have a subscriber or something like that. Because I can't yeah. do it. I can't do it on one. Remember I told you? And you oh, got... Really? Anyway, so if anyone out there knows how to get a broadcast channel, I'm obviously... Over 10k followers, but still don't know Type how to do shit. it. So that's wild. Hit me up in my DMs, please. Yeah, and um, that's pretty much it on the admin front. Yep. Um, that's a big message you've got there, bro. What's going another on? Another story. Bro? This is the what pod. Is that? Oh, this you're is messaging the, yourself. Yeah, I've, I've messaged myself on my laptop. Oh, all right. worst way to do it, but this is how I work. I like it. Um, yeah, guys, please. Please, if you can actually help us get over 10K, we can get this broadcast channel going. And what will happen in there is it'll just be, if I wake up one day and think, you know what, I want everyone's opinion on Douglas Costa to Sydney, I'll just chuck it in there. Ooh. Do you know what That's I mean? It's an interesting one, man. I oh, saw, I've got uh, some. I've got some. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 sure. Dougie. What are the Aussies going to call him? Doug? Yeah, well, yeah. D D Doug. He <laughs> like, What's his nickname? Costas. <laughs> Costa. Hello, Douglas. Doug Costa. Is he Greek? Dougie. Yeah. <laughs> now, he won't be doing much dugging from what I've read. Well, yeah, tell us about what you've what's your research found. I think first we'll we'll start with the Oz Cup, I think. Okay. Okay. So guys, wow. Australia Cup. Wow, 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 wow. I just want to read out the quarterfinal matchups we have coming up. Everything all good? Morton City versus Melbourne Victory. Oakley Cannons versus MacArthur FC. MacArthur are going to get smashed. Adelaide versus Western Sydney. Hume versus South Melbourne. Now, shout out Hume. I saw their atmosphere. Amazing. At, yeah. Wow. They said best atmosphere in Oz. Bit far, but I still think in uh, in the lower leagues, it probably is. It's the best I've seen. Um, well in, done to Melbourne, Serbia. Can I give a shout out to a player from Hume, Amir Abdullah? Timestamp that. So he... Uh, I saw him and he told me he was a bit of a baller. He told me he scored 20 goals he a few is. years ago in MPL2 and then he went and played like I don't know what division in a really random country. That didn't sound like great to me, but his season this year, I don't know how many goals he scored, but the goals I've seen have been unbelievable and he scored from a corner. Yes, he did. FA Cup yes, he did. Day. Literally scored from Windy Hume, utilised it to his ability. Keeper could not do anything. He's a very good player, man. Yeah, so he's always in the team of the week. Shout out to me, Abdullah, having a good season. A league teams maybe need to have a look at him. Um, yeah, Gavin as well said shout out um, Melbourne Serbia, uh, but they're out. Well, MPL three against MPL. Yes, but they so did far. well. They did well to get Plus that 16. far. Um, so there's some tasty lineups there. I still think the final is going to be Victory South. I think it's written in the stars. What about South's mm. final? Ninetieth minute. 
big oh, big yeah. Ross. Um, and then they scored from that wicked free kick. Yeah, Pav. I think it was Pavlovich. I think his name is or something like that. But yeah, that free kick was freakish. It was like from it wasn't halfway, but it was like. What's our take on that? By the way, you, you can't. You obviously have well hit dead ball, but yeah. should that be stopped from shooting from that far out? I mean, the only one that I can probably say should Why never have been What is the keeper that, doing there? For, what's his name from when he played for um, Hamburg and he scored against Dortmund? The free kick, was it uh, the Turkish midfielder? Or Ronaldinho in the World Cup. You know Alstin Top. Nah, the place for AC Milan now. I can't pronounce his name. Chalanoglu. Yes, Chalanoglu. He yeah. scored a... F- which was the only free kick from just front halfway. You're like, maybe the keeper shouldn't save, but should a keeper save that? Not to take anything away from the goal. It's just, I think it was in front of halfway and it's gone in. With wind and stuff like that, sometimes freakish things do happen. Um, <sighs> Is that an excuse for it? But 99 out of 100 times, that keeper's saving it. It was just probably yeah, just and a to win it. situation. I think he tried to shoot too, yeah, because the, the, the line of the attack was at the box and it's gone straight at the goal. Like no one was even near the ball. Unless keeper was arranging, like obviously it's not in picture, but yeah, arranging maybe. and then... I didn't see the full picture kick. like that. I just saw sort of the goal and it sort of – the keeper was like flailing and it went in. But um, yeah, well. um, one of our listeners said, I think the Oz Cup will be the best sporting competition in Australia in 10 years' time. I agree. If the pyramid gets sorted, it could be something incredible. Cool. Best sporting competition is a big claim, I but agree. why? All right, let's get to it. Bro, just l- l- logically think about it. Is every soccer club in the country? Yeah, it's pretty sick, eh? That's the best. That's the best. Yeah, yeah. it's awesome. Man. Yeah, I think it's so underrated how special it is. Well, it and was that even, it's on, it's broadcasted. Yeah. You know, it was Channel cool. 10. It was cool seeing my mates who uh, were in State Four. They, <laughs> their, their one of their fixtures was against Avondale. Yeah, and they took that's the right. lead. Yeah, <laughs> and then shout Avondale, out E Hills. Yeah, shout out E Hills. And that then Avondale happens. was like, all right, like what comp can actually rival that? When you think about it logically. Well, logically, none. Um, but in terms of best sporting, I think it's going to be incredible. But like, I don't know. Unless you it, obviously include things like a World Cup, like Matildas and that kind of stuff. But obviously, yeah. when well, we're talking about domestic things. I, I think the key thing here is getting that pyramid set up. Pyramid scheme. <laughs> Herbalife. Oh, oh God. God. <laughs> our um, new sponsor. <laughs> our new sponsor, Herbalife. <laughs> um, your, money's, your money's safe with us. <laughs> or is it? Um, but, yeah, I think um, if they get the pyramid right and clubs get more decent followings, then it'll feel like a lot more people are involved. Um, but, yeah, it's special. And um, When you're saying the pyramid, what are you talking about? The Australian football pyramid. I feel like it. I feel Re- like the promotion Oz- rele- relegation. Yeah, and I stuff. just feel like you know those other changes that are coming in. Mm. If they can fix certain things, I'm not going to say what they are because I don't know. All I all I know for now is the that I think promotion and relegation should be a thing. But maybe the cup somehow your performance in the cup ties in to something to do with your league performance or seeding or something. No, no, no. I don't think you're involved. In what the FA Cup doesn't have anything to do with the league, does it? In England, I'm talking about. Well, the top teams, well, I guess that's how they do they, it. Yeah. What the FA Cup winner plays the Premier League winner in the Community Shield. Oh, yeah. That's, do, they get, do they get any Champions League benefit? Um, they I could. Like, I, I think like a cup. Man, that's been Man U's loophole. They go into a qualifier or something? Yeah, I think a cup competition but it doesn't does affect the, the, the regular season. No. No, no. Yeah, it should, imagine that. It should promotion aff- relegation. I'm pretty no, sure no, it does. No, no, hey, no. I'm pretty they, sure they it does get, work like that. They get a benefit, though, that's like wild. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. But that makes sense. Imagine if like an MPL team won the Australia Cup and then made AFC. Wait, well, Gav, yeah. I'm sorry, your mic, Gav. Just, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, that, that that's would a be great sick. idea, yeah. Gav. You know? Swan Blue Wings just playing freaking... <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> Heidelberg. <laughs> well, yeah. That's, that's be why... sick. Oh, my God. That would be so hard. We would have to go to that game, watch that live. Well, they're fucking changing everything else, so you never know. Did we, yeah. Are we allowed to talk about that? What's the response that you got? I didn't get one. Mm, I didn't get one. So maybe we'll that. check in in like an hour. And okay, if he does yeah, respond, sure. then we can go. It's an important change. But we sure. are the bad guys at the same time. That's true. So we can break that. Like we don't need anyone to tell us. Oh, what no. It would just be good if we could get the insight Clarity. from in, inside or insight. Can we um, give some rumors anyway. or? I'll give the rumors after. Yeah, we, yeah we'll give them. Um, so, yeah, just wanted to highlight the Australia Cup. Um, 
And we couldn't get out to Oakley versus Heidelberg, but we will most definitely be at one of these upcoming fixtures, at least the final. For yeah, sure. We, we are sorry we didn't go. We did think it was in Oakley. Let's be honest. We're going to go to Oakley. Yeah. But since it was in bloody La Trobe, yeah. Um, yeah. we weren't getting there. Um, just on that, Gavin, brilliant segment last week on NPL Wages. I'll just give Gavin a round of applause. Well there done, were, Gavin. There were some add-ins that we could have done that I did see, like uh, negotiating a contract if you want to go to overseas or A League. Oh, yep. 100% yep. put that in. There was a few more. Yep. I'm not sure if you got any for me. Can, but, um, can I, get, I just did a quick financial ones. breakdown based off what you said the other day yeah. about an average, let's say the average NPL wage, let's say 1200 per week. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's it. Woo! Let's say. Is that, that's inflation. Maybe it's, okay. Maybe. We'll just call it the average for now. Fair. It's yeah, fair. Yeah, There's a I, lot of players on uh, around that or above that. Yeah. So if you're earning 1200 per week, 26 games. And let's games. say you're, you're doing three sessions per week plus a game, four mm. hours work per week. That's an hourly rate of $300 net. So if you were going to get $300 net in a normal job, that would mean in Australia you're earning $560 $66 gross per hour. <laughs> and that... Careers that command this level of gross earnings typically per hour go down as top surgeons and specialised doctors, <laughs> corporate executives and CEOs, senior lawyers and barristers, investment bankers and hedge fund managers, senior consultants and advisors, successful tech entrepreneurs and celebrity professionals. Up and construction. NPL. Look and at me. N- and NPL. Don't I look NPL. like one of them? Up the NPL, baby. Oh, yeah. There we go. Oh, yeah. Let's go. Look now. at me right now. Don't I look like one? That should be on that money. <laughs> He's, <laughs> a He's played 10 years in the league. He's dressed yeah. like Clarence Seedorf, bro. Can I just ask, though, do they, do they – when you're, like, playing in the A-League, when you're doing your money or whatever the fuck – I don't know anything about this – do they do it by an hourly? No, of course not. Obviously, they don't pay you by an hourly rate, but does that come up in discussions with your accountant or whatever? I don't know. Or like, you're earning per hour. No. Yeah. No, not at all. Because that's crazy when you put it like that. It's actually wild when you put it like that. Yeah. Right. Now, that takes me to my point that I wanted to make of there was a lot of people not happy with, with Gavin's breakdown. Now, he's just – don't shoot the messenger, Yeah. And I'll tell you straight out, there was one guy that said mercenaries like Gavin um, ruin the league. And I said, brother, don't you think it's actually on the clubs, not the players? If you're a player and you've only got so many more years left of your legs working, you're going to go where you get the most money. Like what? It's just that's how capitalism works. Like if I am a, a graphic designer... I'm going to go work where they're giving me more money. <laughs> I'm going to go work where they're giving me more money. Like, that's what it is. So when you look at it at that level, I think that that comment was quite uh, outrageous. Um, well, think- and it's also standard of footballers, right? If you want good football. Exactly. Compared to, you know, the state leagues, if you're paying guys lower, you're not going to get as much, you know? Well, I look at it like this, right? So a lot of people were saying the motive is money at the end of the day. For everything. I, I I put up one comment that riled a lot of people up and it was something along the lines of NPL players shouldn't be paid at all. Now, I thought that was wild. You said that. No, I didn't say that. Oh, someone I, that was a said comment. That. I yeah. said, someone said it and I said, do you mind if I put this on the story? Yeah, right. We got about 100 responses. Mm, good. Uh, a lot of them were um, uh, a little bit rude, <laughs> to say the least, but that's how people felt. Yeah. Uh, a few malakas being thrown around. <laughs> Um, <laughs> it's a polarizing topic. Yep, but you know, some people were saying they actually agreed. And guys, I That's need you. Crazy. I need you to say something. Instead of commenting about youth fees all the time, we've done like three episodes on it. Mm. So please go back and check those episodes because we've actually broken it down literally the best anyone physically can mm. as to why they're high. As to go listen to the Dan Birrell episode. Go listen to the um, the Kotze episode. We break it down. So please stop. Mentioning that, um, not everything has to do with not everything is correlated between junior fees and senior yeah. wages. It's not always that cut and dry. But for people saying that MPL players shouldn't get paid, I think that's absolutely outrageous. How do you expect a game to grow when you don't want your second division players being paid? So that's the second tier of football in this country. You don't want them being paid. 
They train three times a week. They play. They bust their guts. NPL players take this shit seriously. Like, some do. I think it's wild. Any other league, any other second division in the world, especially for a country so developed like Australia is, and we have a top 50 league in the world, what, our second tier shouldn't get paid? I think that's absolutely anyone who Anyone who said that has never played in the NPL. There'll be never, no one yeah. who's played in the NPL has gone flying the flag for that. Yeah. That's for sure. Be so. devil's advocate. Why do you think people are saying I'm that? I'm just trying to think like logically, how do you, how do you stop the prices from getting outrageous, right? Like you can put a price ceiling in, a, a salary cap, that kind of thing. But like, obviously it, at the moment, it's a, it's a free market the yeah. way it's mm. done. And so also- So you can be like, ah, oh, this player's not worth, the, worth this, but then- that player is just going to go down to Bentley yeah. Greens or somewhere else and they're going to give them that. So yeah. then obviously they're going to go. And I think so. also people have to understand that before the season start, a lot of clubs do have sponsor nights where sponsors actually come in and they'll buy your jerseys, you know, and put down 30, 40, 50 to 100,000 down to sponsor the club, you know. So when people are commenting about junior fees being so high, there is money coming into the club elsewhere. Yep, good yep. point. I think um, – I think also, if you want to cultivate a good quality of football, a good club, fans, atmosphere, um, growth in terms of, you know, building players to go on to play either in the A-League or overseas, you're not going to get that if you don't pay players. No no player that is at an MPL level right now would be playing for free, I guarantee you. Mm. And that's the thing. Like, for example, my, my situation, yeah? I went overseas after South – and I went for lower money that I could have been making here until I got to the point where I, where I was in Portugal at about 24, 25, where I said, okay, I've got to get my life together. Going back home for, the, for playing football in the NPL is going to be better off for me long-term. Play NPL, coach on the side, do Dude. something else. And I'm at home, I'm comfortable, you know, which a lot of players are doing that now. And I think like, like exactly what you're saying, I agree with, which is... A lot of the players, a lot of the best players in that league Sorry, have, other, have other jobs, have other careers, and it is a big commitment. When you start doing it outside of your main career, to travel three days a week, you might be driving. When I was playing at Moreland, Moreland Zebras, I was driving an hour and a half mm. after work, <clears throat> after work on a Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, whatever, and then playing on the weekend, smashing your body. It's not just nothing. It's, like one, of the, it's one of the main, it. that's one of the main reasons why I've not played for like yeah, five exactly. years. Yeah, exactly. Which is like, because I'm like, you're not going to get those players. If you're I, I take, money. taking too much time away from my actual career. And well, your life. social life, know. if you've got a missus, you've got kids. Yeah. You know, how many players that once they get kids, bang, they're out but, of the league. But, but then the counter to that is, is those high figures affecting the fees that are then passed on to the kids. It's got to play I, I it's got to play some part. I don't know what the answer is to that. I believe and we were told, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe we were told it it changes club to club. Mm. I believe we were told, I could be wrong, but if you go back to our previous episodes that some clubs actually have split the finances between the seniors and juniors so they actually they don't cross over at all. Yeah. And some would feed into it. Or we could just be told lies. You never really know. But I don't think it's the end-all, be-all for the junior fees. I don't think yeah. junior fees are that well, high. Well, I, and like also, I can tell you from first hand, I run a soccer academy, Yeah, that it's all well and good. And this is what I, how I went into it. Oh, I want it to be free. and It's all well and good to say that. But ultimately, you've got to pay a coach to go there. Exactly. And, yeah. and if you want a good coach, they're not going to come for yeah. 10 bucks. And, it's, and, it's, and so then it's like, how do you then get the good coach, which is what the kids need ultimately. The kids need a good coach. So then... It, yeah, and you look it, at like match day, it's a right? Hard one. <clears throat> I don't know if my maths is going to be right here, but thousand bucks, ten bucks entry. What's that? This is so CFO esque. Wait, you mean a thousand people? Yeah. Oh, uh, ten thousand dollars. Ten thousand bucks, right? You got twenty six games, 200, 260,000 right there. Not including food, not including drinks, everything after. Everything hasn't got to do with just juniors. Ten bucks is cheap too. <laughs> exactly, right? <laughs> like they usually. Oh, you're probably half that. You play away for. Yeah, for, obviously so, every yeah. game you're not getting a thousand, but you know two, three hundred. You're gonna get at games, yeah. yeah. Juniors, it, you're gonna tell me when you go play at Danny City and they've got the full um, canteen open every weekend. The kids are going there. The coffees are rolling in. You know, you've got the chavapis going. The bullocks. 
Yeah. People are buying, you know. Like the club is obviously well, that legit, money's going b- towards somewhere. Businesses, man, they're big yeah. businesses. Some of and most places. of the people behind the scenes at these clubs, they're well-run businessmen. They know what they're doing. Obviously, why would they be putting well, their money there? The main issue, the main issue that we have, and it actually rolls into another thing that I did. I'm, I'm one of the best potters in the world, sure. Yeah, you are. Like, you're, you're like, like top actually, three. But also, just to roll this off, all the people that I've met through MPL don't roll it off. I'm that still are going. that are uh, that are. Uh, um, <laughs> Jesus, I feel like we're in Dubton. Um, <laughs> we're gonna get killed. Um, <laughs> He's from Dubton. People, <laughs> people that work in the NPL, all the presidents, most of them are probably one, some of the most wealthy people that I've ever met. You know, so it's like if they're mm. doing that, they're doing it for a reason. Yeah. Well, so the, I think one of the biggest issues is we don't sell players that much. And all the biggest clubs slash academies in the world make their money by selling players, right? So listen to this stat. This is crazy, right? So I did uh, Barcelona, River Plate, Chelsea, uh, Adelaide United Football Club and Melbourne Victory. And the transfers that they've done since 2016 and how much – this is obviously approximate. This is including mainly just the big ones – because there would have been little ones here and there that are not added in, but these are average figures. River Plate, since 2016, have made, a hundred and, uh, on average, $170 million U- uh, Australian dollars from selling players, youth-developed players. $170 yeah. million since two, 2016. Barcelona, $130 million. Chelsea, $182 million. Adelaide United, obviously, Nestor Irukunda, um, the Toure brothers... Riley McGree, some of the some of the transfer fees are in there. It's like five to six million. Now I don't quote me. This is just the figures I found online. Yeah, and bad. Melbourne Victory one to two million. This is since 2016. So look at that difference. Let's say for River Plate, right? Yeah. It's a country with a lower economy than Australia, but how much money that generates for their academy and paying their yeah. coaches and put back into that club? Obviously, that's why they can continue. Well, and I saw. I also like. see the difference when I was first there, two thousand and nine, to where we went in two thousand and twenty two. The club has changed drastically. Mm-hmm. So they, like what Ronaldo was complaining about at Man United, that he went back ten years ago and ten years later, and nothing had changed. Yeah, right. River in the is that even? I don't know. I can't do my maths in my head. It is um, twelve years later from my first ever time to the to twelve years later. New fields, yeah. Um, new gyms, was new whole new stadium has been yeah, redone. You have to all the juniors. Um, everything has changed, and most of the most of the coaches were still the same yeah. because they believe in what they teach. Is this, is this in Rivers' point at of view? River? Yeah, but you'd argue, man, you even though they've not changed, their facilities now would probably be better than Rivers. Yeah, that's it's, it's oh, probably no, true. I'm talking about Ronaldo. He complained when he went back to Man United that not much had changed. Same saying that they're saying, not reinvesting yeah, into the yeah. Well, that's because they got bought by Americans yeah. who but did, didn't also, give a fuck about the club. Also, what you're saying is Adelaide. Obviously, they made five million, right? Man, and Melbourne Victory one mil. Look at the difference and how much if they if they invested more in the juniors, how much more they could just pump back in and make more and make more, like your Rivers, yeah. like your Chelsea's, and all that. Like I've heard Chelsea's facilities. Is best in the world. Yeah, I'm not well, to well, talk I would about just say, honestly, I don't know how much facilities are necessary, but the coaches, like yeah. reinvesting. Imagine you had, imagine you had the money to bring Harry Kuehl to come and, and coach your youth. It sounds ridiculous when we say it, but that's what they're doing in River yeah. Plate. Like yeah. River Plate, you go there, you've got a World Cup winner coaching the under nines. Yeah, yeah. and you're like, that's how. I wish we have more of that in our game in Australia. Like that 06 team, I hope, I hope some of them are involved in these academies. Were you saying that I, – I, I sort of lost your point at the start. Were you saying that you feel like the NPL should have transfer fees? There is. I'm going to tell you a story. Uh, I was on a two-year contract at Dandy and I was supposed to go to Avondale a year beforehand and Dandy put on my head 10K to go. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> so – is that a transfer fee? Yes, that or was a transfer fee like that Avondale had hostile. to pay. <laughs> right? Negotiation king. I said, Dandy, 
if you give me what I want, I'll stay. And no, that's said, not a transfer done. fee. It was. The Avondale had to pay the 10K. Oh, Wait, otherwise, it wasn't, it wasn't being able to release. Real contract, which is the hold on, hold on. Let me just, serious. Let me just put this in English. So, <laughs> in English. Avondale paid Dandy City 10 grand for you. That was going to be the fee for me to go a year beforehand. Oh, to break the contract. To break the contract. To break the fake contract. Yeah. yeah. To break the handshake. <laughs> yeah. What is going on? And the on? short and the espresso. Between Croatia and Italy. <laughs> so did they pay it? No, no because I negotiated for what I wanted. Oh, you wanted stay. more money. And I stayed. You're year. worth more than 10K. Yeah, I, is that insulting to you, Gab, by any stretch? Or is that a compliment at that level? I don't know. That's what we're talking about. Is I'm, the I'm, MPL so I'm on the fence there with that one. Last time I checked your transfer market, you were worth 180K. Right now. Money. Not now. Oh. But like I think at a to point, do what? Yeah, no, I don't know. <laughs> that sounded like <laughs> oh, that sounded like that. thunder. That sounded like thunder wanted to get rid of you, bro. <laughs> Ten K, bro, we will do it. It wasn't now. <laughs> do you know? Do you ever know what your? If you're not going to tell me, I'm going to Google it anyway. What, what was your highest transfer no, value? No, I don't, don't know. North, I, I would have looked at the time, but I don't remember. Can I'm we please fi- get that up, North? I'm going fi- to find you something crazy about me. I want your transfer oh, value. This is the greatest article. Remember I messaged you about this? Well, like, no, what's I got going s- on here? Oh, I'm going to try to find know, it. Listen to this. Can you please tell us your transfer value, Jake? Well, I I don't know what it was when I was probably worth what worth anything. But, All right, we'll get but, it. But, we'll get it but this, this is a true story. Uh, and I don't know. I don't want to <laughs> shoot him in the foot here, but Martin McDonald, I'm going to have to say your name. There was an article on footballtransfers.com. And I don't know if there's a piss take, but it's, it's, it, must, it must have been. But this is... 15th of August, 2021. So I'd been retired for, let's say, four or five years after playing two years in the MPL as well. So from professional football, even longer, like seven years. Um, and he's got the top 10, top 10 uh, transfer value players in Australia. So I think Matt, Matty Ryan was number one at 11.8 million euros. Nils Degen, it was 3.6. Aaron Moy was 3.6. Aiden Mobile was 2.8. Aiden Hustich was 2.5. Jamie McLaren, 2.4. Tom Rogic, 2.1. Jake Barkadesh at ninth was 1.5 million euros. I've been smoking smoking a cigar, man, for four years. Hadn't played. I I don't even think this is a real real thing, but someone sent it to me and it's legitimate. Can Can we we find out, please, guys, can we tell... Find this guy. Who was it? Matthew M- McDonald. M- Mark McDonald. Mark D- McDonald. I did. I'm pretty sure when I put it out, I'm like, bro, I haven't played for like Where five, this five six from? years. And I don't know if I've ever been valued that much as well. <laughs> <laughs> Let alone for mean, when I'd been not playing. Does he mean rupees? It's fucking the euros, bro. Is that, that transfer the market? 10? No, no. Yeah, use this the number is, 10. I, I'm sorry for laughing, but... Bro, what do you think? It's, it's, it was a serious matter. Of course it's funny. Okay. <laughs> but the, fu- the, funny, the funniest part about it was I thought it was real. So I messaged him, Jake, what's going on here, man? But he's not, kind of he's not telling me. <laughs> and he goes, I've got no, no idea. I think it's like a guy who's been like playing football manager too much and like he's just created some values yeah, off perhaps, that maybe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Can I just read this? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You guys have just got roasted by chat GPT sort of. Oh, wow. What was Rashid Mahazi's and Jake Barkadesh's most expensive trailer ever? Um, Transfer value. Neither Rashid Mahazi nor Jake Barkadesh had significant international transfers that would place them among the most expensive players. Both had modest careers. Rashid Mahazi spent most of his time, so they didn't even give a. They didn't even give a. Well, can I say one thing? Who the fuck is that? Did they were they at one of my games? No. Chat GPT. No, I don't think he ever. Did they ever see me play? Were they in the fucking gym with me? Or is it just Nor? So Chat GPT, go fuck yourself. (laughs) Nor's just hating. (laughs) Wait, so you typed in Rashid Mahazi transfer value, and that's what it came up with. Oh, you put it in chat. See, I want to get it from transfer market. Rashid was worth some decent coin at one point. Have you? Can you talk about like? Is anyone actually paying that? Can you talk about the the club that you should have gone to when you were at um, Incheon? And QPR? N- no. I was... No, what? I just, made, I just made that one up. Oh. <laughs> but hey, Nicky... Hey, if you, I'll try to get Nicky Ward on here. Nicky Ward played at QPR when yeah. they were picking. All right, let's um, have a little game. Nicky Ward. Let's oh, have a little you game. Know, you know what I'm talking about, yeah? Uh, well, there was Turkey. There was... No, the, no. F- the other... Ma- the biggest club in... Like, one of the biggest clubs in Asia. You could have gone to. <laughs> it was like an absolute mishap. Pohang? Yeah. Have you told that story? What do you mean mishap? Well, you What's were supposed to, you were supposed to go. 
And then what happened? Pretty much, Brandon O'Neill ended up there. Yeah, I'll, but right. you were supposed to go, and I don't know why you couldn't go. But that's why Brandon O'Neill ended up playing for Pohang Steelers. This I don't know. Like, yeah, I don't know exactly what happened. I don't know exactly what happened there. But I was I signed for Inch on the second season, um, and then I don't I don't know if there is a connection there. Let's I don't want to speculate. L- let's uh, play a little game. I thought it was more concrete than that. My bad. Hey, go, we'll play go. a little game yep. just quickly. What do you think Rashid Mahazi's highest transfer value was? Australian. Uh, no, this would be in Euros. When when Gavin's guessing this, is he guessing based off my footballing ability? <laughs> no. Uh, I'm gonna. I, I'm gonna say, say two hundred million. I'm gonna go. Okay, for, no, 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 no. Hold on. Yeah, that's my boy. <laughs> hold on. Boy. Give a real answer. I'm gonna go 500,000. Uh, 800,000. 800,000, 500,000? How much do you reckon? Because you don't even know. I I think there was something 400. I don't know, bro. I just, don't know. Just say Euros, is, Euros is difficult. Just say a number. 400,000. Okay. I believe this is in, in Euros because it's on transfer market, which is a European thing. 650,000, bro. There you go. Yeah, I was hey, close. We were close. Dang, that was close. Boy, yeah. We were close. That was at your inchin. Yeah. Right. What's Carter's? What's Carter's now? Can you guess? Carter's right now? I'll have a quick look. He's 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 probably. But I'd love to know what uh-huh. they base that off. Mm. Where's that number come and from? Who's doing? Do you know what I mean? Like, well, that's why we trust need those numbers, man. That's why we. No went... one's paying six hundred thousand for me at that. <laughs> Actually, to be fair, <laughs> no. Bro, you I, went to the K League. Yeah, yes, yeah, maybe I reckon like so, K League to somewhere in Europe. Maybe bat, people would pay. If you had a huge huge season at Incheon, someone could pay like half a million Australian for you for sure. Some of that that those fees happen. It's I guess it's just my projection. Like of imagine what. Adam Taggart's value when he was at Suwon. Mm. He would have been like maybe worth a million. One point um, five. Gavin, he was, it. he was the highest goal scoring career. Carter's yeah. highest market value was four hundred thousand euros. Hey, that, shout out to Adam Taggart while he's at career in career. By the way, I remember getting on the bus. This would be like a weekly occurrence. I would get on the bus to go to training, and the, and all the boys because none of them spoke English, they would just go Taggart, Taggart. <laughs> Two more goal, two more goal. <laughs> Everyone was so scared of him, man. Do you know, he, he told the, me- He was the guy. He told me, there's a few funny stories he told me when he come on the Unlaced around Korea. And one of them was, he was getting so big in there that, or over there that he had a uh, Pilates bed in his house because of how much they trained to take care of his body. <laughs> that whatever the main broadcast news station came to his house- and they're speaking Korean whilst he's doing like some sort of plyometric <laughs> movement on a Pilates do you, do, bed. And can he's we there like, he's video? like, man, I had no idea what they were doing. There's a clip of it online. We did, we did a clip about it. Well, <laughs> I went on Korean national TV and played guitar to my uh, teammates. Yeah, correct. So, so you, the A-League should take a leaf out of the Korean. It's so much more well, personable. What song? Korean. It was, oh, no, nah, I don't even talk about it, man. It was, it was honestly his most uncomfortable thing I've ever done in my life. He was telling me, because I was injured, and he was telling me to play motiva- a motivational song to my teammates for their game on the weekend. And I was like, it's an acoustic guitar. And they don't what? speak English. He's saying, he's, well, saying like, a, he's saying a tearjerker, bro. And then, and then I said, well, how, how, what else do you play with an acoustic guitar? They go on guitar? to lose 3-0. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then we lost 3-0 on the weekend. It wasn't like, you didn't have to chart me <laughs> off. Like it wasn't no, someone it was that like a, It was like a, a... Okay, I'll tell you what I did. All right, I'll tell you what I did. I feel like I know the so song. so uncomfortable. I played Sunday morning. So I played one Sunday. song at the start. Yes, he did. And too. then I don't... Then he come back with this thing of like, it needs to be more motivational. Yeah, fuck Jack Johnson. And I didn't know what to do. So I played Sunday morning because we were playing Saturday night. Ah. And I said, oh, I played Sunday morning because I want us to have a good Sunday morning with a good Saturday night. Yeah. yeah, and that's it was, the most it, uncomfortable it felt moment in my watching whole life. Purely because not because of his singing or guitar skills, because just five people just staring at you in silence, and then going like this after a while, yeah, and then yeah. bowing. Um, was Bro. is that Maroon Five? <laughs> <laughs> is it? Yeah, it's, oh mate. Oh, um, it's, it's who can say they did that? Though? Nobody. That's why Except you're worth six hundred and fifty grand. Yeah. Um, cool. So Jake's worth like nine mil. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, getting, I'm getting more valuable the longer I'm out of the game. Yeah, true. Wonder what you're going to be after next this. week. I could be three million euros, bro. After this charity, knows, after this charity game, yeah. you might be a bit more. He was, oh, yeah. Let's hope, bro. Um, yeah. So I hope that uh, we all think that NPL players should get paid. By the way, um, I just want to give you guys just don't talk. 
for 30 seconds and just think of your answer, okay? I want the top three most iconic MPL players in your mind ever. So just, they don't have to be the best, but I mean iconic in your mind. Take a while to get your three. Top three? Yeah. Can we write them down? The whiteboards? Yeah, if you want, you can get the whiteboards, yep. I'll get the whiteboards for you. Oh, thanks. No, I don't want to write them down. Okay, so again, so Gavin, so if we're not all going to do it, we're, we're just going to say it. Okay, all right. <laughs> yep, sorry, Nor. Um, so just tell me when you're ready. Iconic is an interesting... Y- iconic, yeah, not best because that's boring. Iconic, it's like, pwah, this guy's... Does this f- count as like NSL as well? Mm, nah, because we got the some... same teams as the MPL. Yeah, I know, but it's like uh, just maybe a bit more recent. Okay. Ooh, there's one that comes one, to mind, bro. like there's well, one. Well, my com- first, just to get it off. No, 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 no! Don't, Hold don't, on. don't. Wait, wait, Gavin, have three players, and we'll go around, and everyone can say their three. Well, I've, I've already I, got one. One hundred percent. If we're talking MPL, no disrespect to now, the gap between just around when the A League started, that was the MPL was by VPL or whatever. That was by far way better than now. Because they were all kind of professionals. Okay, you point. can say that, but so not like I'm, the I 80s. Would, no, that's like 2005. Yeah, that's fine, I guess. But that, no, don't go back to like friggin' the 70s. I just 70s. told you when I'm gone. That, that period. So that, that, that era is the best part of the VPL. Mm. Okay, you got three players then? Yeah. Do you have three players? I know one, you're definitely gone. Can they, I don't know can if they still... What if, what if we say the same player? Doesn't matter. Okay. Oh, man. It's a hard one. Do you have three, Gavin? Yeah. Okay, Gavin, just don't do anything else. Just say your top three most iconic MPL players according to you. So, captain, when I used to go watch South, Dean Estasiatis. Okay. Mm-hmm. Second, Fernando de, Mor- de Morales. Oh, that, that, he was one of mine. And then, as well. of now, best player I've played within the A-League, Christian Trajeski. MPL, you mean? Sorry, MPL. Christian Trichesky. From Avondale. I don't know how he's not playing higher, but 100% best player. So they're your three iconic. All right. Yeah. Well done. Um, I'd say Fernando as well because he was a, he was. I've got a one player. more to add in too. Do it, no. we'll do it at the end. Vaughn Coveney. Yeah. He's fucking how is he, he's, why is he getting four, bro? I, I had to. I don't know. Was that yours? Was one I of yours? Say the rules two of mine. I can say two. the rules, <laughs> but they're not the followers. Others? Fernando and, and Vaughn. Yeah. Vaughn-y. So I would say Fernando, Vaughn Coveney, and then my, my favorite player to watch was Bill Damianos. Fucking magician, bro. Okay. Technical genius. Okay, I'll go. I'm going to go a left field one, Luke Sherbin. Luke Sherbin. Do you remember him? Yeah. Didn't did he even play? Andy in the Thunder. Year? I think he got an A League offer. He was a baller, man. That's a little bit of a left field one. And then I'll say you've taken two of mine. Are you so involved in this game? I've got um, the best. None of you have said him. I know who you're going to say. Can you do yours? Because I've yeah. got to rethink mine because of his Okay, team. so again, for you guys, I'm, I'm very new to the MPL. I wasn't going around like I was a footy kid. So I how do you know who you have the best? Because it's my, I've got the best, I'm the best potter in the world. <laughs> it's true. The, when I say iconic, there's one guy that I've never actually seen play in the flesh, but every single person comes up to me and says, Pwah, bro, as if you've never seen him play, bro. He was overweight. But he was like the gunnest goal machine in the NPL history, Brandon Barnes. Um. And I was like, okay, this guy's a legend. But how many years did he play? He played what, three NPL years. NPL two also. Yeah, but, but Gav, is he not iconic? Yeah, he's iconic. He is, yeah. But he's he talking is. the best ever. Yeah, he's he iconic because of his personality. He is. That's what I mean. And to be honest, honestly, this year I started training with him and I wish we did keep him on board at Thunder because – he took responsibility, yeah, and for what? <laughs> the weight was seen on his shoulders at Thunder. Everyone knew Barnsley, right? The what was on his shoulders? The weight, the weight, the weight was on his pun, shoulders, pun, literally. Yes. And oh, what's he talking? About? No, he's talking about the team responsibility. Oh, the team, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where are you going? <laughs> nah, Barnsley. Honestly, honestly, right. in terms of vibes in the change rooms, elite, mm. right? In terms of. Bringing character mm. and personality, top, top notch. Yes, was probably 30 kilos overweight. That's but, so sick. I love but that. But yeah. ball at the feet. <laughs> Didn't yeah. give a fuck. Ball at the Back feet. 30 goals a year. Yeah, ball at the feet. Ridiculous. And like I said, I wish I, wish I played a season with him because in training 
and and all of that was so good. And he would have just take he he took responsibility of players that didn't need responsibility. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. Like a youngster that you know might be having a stinker. If he doesn't, he'll take the responsibility for the boy. You know, mm. and that's mm. what I, I I wish we kept him because we needed that this year at Thunder. Yep. Do you have an, another one that you thought of? Uh, yep, Richie Cardoza. Yep, great player. Henry Ferrodo, Kompatsianis. There's so Probably many. The greatest Very set so piece. Piece. Um, yeah. set piece. Uh, I was going to say Kompatsianis. Ricky Diaco. Ricky Diaco. One nilo. Hundred percent. Juan Nilo. Did wow. You, <laughs> boys, please. <laughs> boys, do you guys, <laughs> hey, do you boys know Yusuf Yusuf? Yes, Yusuf oh my Yusuf gosh. was top, bro. Top. These are the, these are the proper ballers, bro. These top. are the it's great real football, players. man. I'm George so, Gutsoulis. Oh, Yusuf. Yusuf for Avondale. Bro, I used to be Wait, one at a time, one at a time. Yeah. One at a time. Yusuf for Avondale also is the most underrated baller ever. Is this a Somali international? Mate. He can do anything. And he is very religious, everything. But he plays like he's having a Jossa every game. <laughs> so you just had to say he's religious because yeah. he's not actually having a Jossa. Yeah, okay. He's not, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So he's relaxed. I'm surprised he's you didn't so say chill. Liam Boland. Limo, yeah. I didn't have enough time with him. And, and the, <laughs> the thing with Limo, every time we used to play against each other, I used to hate him. I'd just smack him so hard. But he was so big and tall. Does he not have a record for most goals or most something? Most goals now. Most just goals in the it. NPL? Yeah. Yeah, you know, Carl Reckia Reck- Reck- has got to be up there, That's man. I've got to have a I've quick story. You said Carl Reckia. Yeah. Was, was that NSL, though? Did he play NPL? Yeah, he did. What was, he played what was, I'm pretty sure. I don't know if he played for What South. was the centre-back that played at South and then played at Oakley? And he's so well-known. Dino. No, no, no. Jurachevic. I think he's I think he's Masso. <laughs> yeah, no, yep. Yeah. <laughs> this is getting more and more. Anyway, I just wanted I to have a quick story on on Coveney, right? <laughs> Vorney, I used to go to South every weekend, right? And I had the jersey Crazy Jones that had the sponsor at the front, Crazy mm-hmm. Jones. Never had a South jersey on the back, number eight, because of Vaughn Coveney. I wear the number eight because of Vaughn Coveney. Wow. That's wild. He was that good, man. Vaughan. He was scoring every week, yeah. bro. And if I have one team in the A-League, it's Newcastle Jets because Vaughn went from there to, to Newcastle yeah. Jets. What a random... Wow. You're a yeah, Jets you're fan? You're a Jets fan? That's yeah. so good for the pod. We got a Jets guy on. Yeah. You need to take that on board heavily this yeah, season. Yeah, you are wearing Jets. You yeah. are yeah. Jets. Any Jets fans out there, we need Gav in Jets merch. Yeah. We so need a like who's who's the Jets best player? Of all time, it's um no, Vaughn Coven. Carr, obviously, probably. Yeah. No, what's a striker? He was Griffiths. Yeah. Joel Griffiths is Woo. good. I thought you were gonna say something. I played funny. with his I played with his brother Ryan Griffiths. He was a baller. <clears throat> you, what would we say Milos Lujic up there with oh, yes. of the NPL? Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. There's a lot of great players yeah. in this year. Adrian Chipetta. I just I'm that era to me, bro. I don't know. I could be wrong, but that fucking that was pretty good, man. Yeah, I think it's just because we were Chris Kiosis is is actually a veteran. veteran. Uh, I'm unplugging he's him here, but he actually is. <laughs> yeah. He's played for How every club games? in the league. <laughs> the nose. There's a lot of journeymen, bro. He's probably got There's a lot 400 of games. Well, you got his um. Spell. Brad Norton's like Brad Norton, I was South just going to yeah. pick it off. Yeah. have a statue at yeah. that, that ground. Tim Marla, KK. KK is massive. Oh, shout out to Tim Marla. He's going to love this because he listens in. Yeah. Tim Marla's won a lot of titles. Tim Marla! <laughs> He's won a lot <laughs> of titles a for a fullback. Uh, <laughs> me and Timmy <laughs> at South, to be fair, he did put me in my place once because um, I was fuming. I was fuming. He's such a nice guy. I know, right. I know, but he was such a tough, tough bastard. I get him. And one get tackle, him. I smacked him. <laughs> And he cared to go at me. And I was yeah. fuming because I wasn't playing, but and he you know, understood me. He understood me. Timmy Marla, Timmy Marla's the kind of guy, mid game, bro, you'd be like in the thick of it. He's like, hey, Jakey, you all right, mate? Yeah, mm. you're going all right? Yeah, I hate doing? people that do that's, that, bro. Yeah, that's his. Uh, oh, no, man. sometimes I'm on his team. He's like, hey, Timmy, you're looking good, bro. <laughs> that's tacit lying. He's just how he is, man. He's oh, a chiller. When you're on the I team. I love him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was just. Oh, and bro, then he's that... like, he'd get the boy and just he'd literally pass the ball one meter to you. He goes, you have it, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I love him. Um, what about <laughs> I love him. just just to round this up? What about iconic uh, guy goalkeepers in the league? Is there anyone that oh, sticks out? There was, yeah, oh, Stuart this, Webster. It's, there's Stuart no Webster. one more iconic. Yeah. yeah. Do you Probably. remember once when we were kids, we got led into the Oakley dressing rooms to hear a team talk? Oh, Pelican. Pelican mm. was a great mm. player. Mm. Remember him? No. Wow. <laughs> so hold on. They don't let suited and booted do anything, but they let a bunch of fucking four year olds. Man, in. I was in a change room once with with. Uh, Oakley Cannons, when Stuart Munro was coached, they had George Gutsoulis, Bill Damianis, Kombutianis. Are you making up Greek names? I think you are. Bro, you, yeah, keep you going. You've got no idea about I, I actually don't. I don't. Yeah. So 
I lived across the road from Compos, to be honest, as a kid. He used to train me. He's a good guy, Con. Yeah. Pelican was in there. Anyway, Stuart Munro was there going, fucking let's fucking do this, do that. I swear you were with me. And anyway, Pelican comes over and he just puts, he's putting his head, but I don't listen to any of this, bro. <laughs> it's like, this will never it's help you. Yes, <laughs> not good for your ears, huh? For and I was kid. like, I was like, what? <laughs> I remember oh, going to South. Man, it just smelled like deep heat. That's all I remember. <laughs> I remember yeah. going to South and every time they would miss, I'd go chase the ball and, and hide it. So then after the game, I'll take him home. Of course you did that. That's I feel like you'd still do that now. <laughs> That's a CFO move. Hey, <laughs> Jake, you know something that I found interesting? When you're in professional changing rooms, did they smell like DP? Never. Never, huh? Never. It's only semi-pro Mate, changing MPL, rooms. it was like the walls, are, it's, it's seeped into the walls, bro. Mm. I reckon you can open the door now, no one's in there. It'll just whack you. Smell It'll it whack now. you. Why, why do you think that is? I, I don't in know. In pro changing rooms that don't... That, <laughs> It's the cold nights. <laughs> cold MPL can, nights just heat up the legs. Maybe it doesn't fucking work. Yeah, maybe <laughs> yeah. It's, there's, there's no scientific proof of there's, it. And there's also like Hold a on, lot I of- I might want to sponsor. <laughs> there's a lot of worn-torn bodies in the, in the MPL that are, mate, I'll do whatever it takes, bro, just to get back out the next Well, week. I think that's probably down, due down to like, yeah, like you haven't sports scientists and proper proper masseuse and stuff, not some, not some random uni student. Yeah, um, that's a good yeah. point. So that's probably- To be fair, just on pro tape. Right yeah, now, last well, point. Like we're talking about pro tape. I'm helping out the physios now that pro tapes come into the game because every time a physio left his bag there, I'm taking those tapes with me. Yeah, so how, great, so, yeah. Yeah. how do you help pro tape by doing Wait, that? you're stealing tape off the Well, physios. I'm helping the physios out and giving pro tape more business. I don't get how that works. Wait, hold on. <laughs> yeah. Oh, they got to buy more. So, so he's you're stealing. You're stealing their tape. Yeah. And that's helping the physios. It's helping the physios now because pro tape's involved, so I have to buy separately. I still no, don't get him. What do you say? I think I, I think, think I, I, <laughs> Nor I think said it right. He's stealing pro tape, <laughs> so they have to buy it. more. He, he doesn't have to steal I think that Yeah, I don't have to. Have to. I, I, I thought it was on there. You're, now he doesn't have to steal because he has It an sounded answer. like he was trying to fuck over the physios. That's what I yeah. thought you were saying. Yeah. Is, that is what he's saying. <laughs> that is what he's saying. Yeah, I used to. Oh, yeah. Now I'm becoming a better yeah, yeah. 100%. man. hundred percent. I think oh, we all we all did. Bro. Yeah. We all used to take yeah. the fight. You can't tell me physio bag when it's laying there, you're not grabbing a few They'd things. They'd like, oh, how much has been used of that? Who's yeah. It? Where is you it? Know? Yeah. How stingy yeah. are physios? Yeah. And then you do the quick like when they're hey, not yeah. looking. <laughs> the football is all there. <laughs> I, I genuinely... The more I speak, sort of, I sort of hear things. Yeah, but oh, what about, about I was what? the I was just bad about footballers this. being a bit. How you going? What about no I used way. to I used to always In a lot leave, of ways. I used to always leave the change rooms last. If there's a spare kit, spare jumper, ciao, see you later. Okay, okay. so That's you're the a, worst. Team you're a kleptomaniac. <laughs> <laughs> you're addicted to Robert thiefing <laughs> thievery. <laughs> you know when they dump all the the jerseys after the match and they're just being dumped on, and you got like people that got subbed on and they leave it there, like. Oh my God. So the kit man has to collect oh, it and put it in the middle my, and then you pick up your stuff afterwards? My Motorola got stolen from <laughs> Darabin Sports one, one year at school sports. Not the probably Razor, bro. Guy. Not the Razor. The the Jake. Jake. I can't Razor. remember what. Jake <laughs> sold it on guy. eBay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on. We spent way too market. long on that. Yep, cool. Um, <laughs> Douglas Costa has signed for Sydney FC. Don't clap it up. Maybe you can do one. Cool. Douglas Costa signed for Sydney FC on a free transfer from Fluminense. Uh, he's th- he's 30, 33 years old. Sorry, can, can yeah. you start this whole thing again and do it in a Portuguese accent? Oh, I fucking knew you were going to say Brazilian that. A Brazilian Portuguese accent? <laughs> no. Come on, bro. <laughs> oh, that's going to be good. Come on, bro. <laughs> no, do, do, now I'm being told to make a slide. Do, 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 do you, bro. Do you. Do this feel <laughs> pretending to be a Brazilian reporter. <laughs> reporting from no, Australia, fuck it. saying, no, "Come on, you can do it." No, you know you come can. On. D- you, you can, can definitely do, it, do some words in a Brazilian. Just add an e on everything at the end. You can do it, bro. Come on. Oh, this is so much breaking. Come on, bro. Here with the interviewee. This is interviewee. Just picture us all naked. <laughs> Douglas Kosh to Sydney AFC on a free transfer from Fluminense. <laughs> Fluminense. <laughs> Multiple league titles. A Bayer, a Juve. How good is that? Bravo. Bro? He's hey, bravo. Top potter in the bravo. world. Bravo. You said about 10 words and covered the whole topic. That was yep. unbelievable. Yeah, well done. Seriously, though. Um, 
Apparently, they said it took over a year of conversations every few days to convince him to join and painstakingly long hours trying to figure out where he actually slots into the team. So... Very yeah, it must big. be hard trying to slot Dockers Costa into your team. Now, what I will say is I did some research because I'm the best potter in the fucking world. Top potter. Right? Top potter. That's a good... I, w- I found Brazilian Twitter. Brasileiro. I went in. I, I walked in. Brasileiro X? Yeah. Brasileiro X. Brasileiro X? I stamped my passport. I, the Fluminense fans. <laughs> and I said, let's see what they've got to say about Douglas Costa. So I translated these tweets. Oh, no. Oh, my God. They battle good. A player who is not committed, a party animal, and doesn't care of his physical fitness needs to get out of here. It's about time. Less than a month ago, this guy was a Fluminense player. Now he plays soccer with influencers. What's justified this hiring of Douglas Costa? As a fan of Fluminense, the last club Douglas Costa played for, I'd like to express my regrets. They signed a dead man on the pitch. I don't know if Australian soccer is competitive. If it is, he won't do anything. He's already retired. He just hasn't assimilated yet. Oh. Um, wow. I cannot is- overemphasize how bad he was for LA Galaxy until he coincidentally started playing well when his contract was about to run out. So, I think you'll do. Well. I bet you he'll light the league up. Still, now I just want to say that to say, right? It's not looking good from what the LA Galaxy and the Fluminense fans have said about him. He's actually his goal and assist record and games played is not good for either team. To be fair, he was living in Hollywood. Yeah, I was just going to say I'll maybe say- I'll give him a place in Bondi. <sighs> Few things. Well, Bondi is well, Hollywood. Could, yeah, well, Few things. Walls. <laughs> I'm not surprised he did come because Douglas Costa has come before to do uh, little clinics. He's played futsal over here before in Melbourne with influence. Um, just to come down. Uh, so I'm not surprised he has in Sydney, South America over it's, in Sydney. It's not you've got to take, if Sydney you have him there. You've yeah. got to, you've got but to take him. Don't of you? course you do. My, take a gamble. My, bro. my if, way if of things as bad as it is, is I'll take a gamble. Does the A League need him? And this is where I go back to, do we need Douglas Costa paying him probably stupid money for kids that we could be bringing in? Yeah, but like, he'll be, will he be on a, mar- he'll be a marquee player, won't he? I don't, th- th- again, he's one of the ones that he's kind of in between. Obviously, he's one of a great like player, starch. but he's not, um, Marquee's outside the he's not cap, so they Del Piero mean, level fan base. Guys, wait. So he's not going to bring the fans. So it has to be what he's producing on the park. So it's like, I don't know. I'm with Gav. Play a young player, man, for the love of God. This is how I look at it. I don't want to be the party pooper, but I have a few points here. The first one is they've actually said opposite to what Rasha said, even though I agree with what Rasha said. They think it's going to bring you fans. They're saying it's the biggest marquee signing since Del Piero, which I'm not too sure about. I don't think you can compare Douglas Costa to to Del Piero. Nani's bigger. yeah, Nani's Yeah, bigger. when it comes to like titles and status, but in terms of like ability, there's some fucking visa players that have been here that don't get enough. I, I'm not saying even it's not nothing to do with the just ability. Status. I'm just for notoriety. Yeah, oh, like yeah. Nani's bigger profile. Yeah, here than maybe not in Brazil, maybe in certain parts of the world, Douglas Costa is oh, bigger, yeah. but Nani here is bigger, hundred percent. Mm. I um, gotta be. You know, there's been a few that have come over here that are really high profile, and it's hit or miss. And more often than not, it's actually a miss. Uh, Del Piero did well, but then you look at people like Nunny, Honda, Sturridge, Galas, Heskey, Kuehl. They didn't do well here. Mm. They did not do well here. Now, granted, some marquee signings did really well. Some came um, sort of out of the blue, like Alfie LaFondra, Adam LaFondra. He was amazing, right? And people thought he was finished because of where he was playing overseas. I don't want to, yeah, I don't want to be too, I don't want to put a dampener on it, but I, I feel like um, it's a risky one. Obviously, it's a free transfer, so okay. But they're going to be paying him a lot in wages he, or else he wouldn't have come down here because he was looking at Saudi at, at one point last year. Um, and again, is it needed? The, that, that sort of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Novelty wears off after a few games, especially yeah. if he's not playing well. So, yeah, I want to go see Douglas Costa. But it's not like I'm going to go every week to see Douglas Costa. The first few games might be, you know, a couple thousand more than it usually is. But it's not a player that – it's not like a Zlatan or something where it's like, yeah. oh, my God. 
you got to go. Yeah. Like, and I if, think, like, if he's coming down to Melbourne, am I going to watch him personally? Probably not. I didn't even yeah. – Devil, Devil's advocate here, though. Can I say one thing? Day in, day out, even if he is a party boy, it is mad for players to train with. That's oh, the, yeah. Bro, I'm telling you. When those players are there, it, young kids coming up from the academy, yeah. training with Douglas Costa, there is some benefit. So maybe from the notoriety of the fan point of view, you go watch him once or twice. But if he lights up the league, he, like his ability, he could do some scary stuff. Don't get me wrong. Whether are, he wants to. you know, There are positives like experience. I mean, he's won like – Multiple league titles in Germany, in Italy. 30, he's 34 or 33 titles he's been a part of. Probably, yeah, because he won like friggin' 10 at Shakhtar. Um, so, you know, he's a top player. That's like an elite level athlete right there. Like that, at one point, he was probably like a top 50 player in the world. But again, the fall off has been drastic. Um, again, I don't want to be a hater, but I'm just trying to see does the league really benefit from this? Um, because we've seen what's happened with huge marquee signings in the past, and um, okay, which uh, for, with that question, which would you say worked and which would you say didn't work? Oh, it's hard to say off the top of my head, but I, I always go back to Lafondra. He was fucking incredible. No, but he's not a big name. He's not a big I'm name, but he was a marquee like, though, from, wasn't he? From the, the the idea of signing a big name marquee Sturridge. player, <sighs> Sturridge, Del, Del Piero, Honda, Del Piero, Del Piero Dwight York, like okay. Dwight York worked. Okay. I think the more positive-ish ones, Del Piero for sure. Do you think there's an, a thing there because he's Italian, there's so many Italians. Like he's probably the biggest player maybe. That's oh, wait, are we talking, are are we talking, like also? Are we talking on field performance? Are we talking the whole package here? The whole, just like worked for the league. Del Piero. Promoted Dwight league, and, did Dwight well, and Del like everything. Definitely, Dwight York. Shinji Ono, would you give that a tick of approval? Western Bro, Sydney? What a player, yeah. but he didn't have that level. But uh, I feel yeah, like... I, don't know I feel like signed off status. Yeah. What about Timmy? Yeah. I don't know. Like, definitely I think Japan status, really well. he was enormous. I don't know, global yeah. Yeah. status. Gavin said Tim Cahill. Wow. Moments. Honestly, the goal Cahill scored. Yeah. Was you, did you play in that game? Yeah, we spoke about this. I was on, uh, I was on the bench. I was... <laughs> What the what fuck was that? Yeah, yeah. It's, cra- it's like FIFA. Oh, I mean, for me personally, I loved having him in the league. But like, I'm yeah, I'm just asking objectively. Do you think these the other ones worked? Go reel them off. Which ones worked? Which okay, ones worked? David Vuja. That worked. was like a short. That was a short stint. Though, yeah, but he got like didn't he get like nine in eleven or something? Yeah. <laughs> Shout out David Vuja. Um, uh, can I tell you a story about uh, I played in William Gallus's first game? Have I told that on this pod? No, bro. I think so. I wish I had Daniel Sturridge's phone number before he came to the A-League because I would have told him. I'm like, bro, you're from Birmingham. You are going to struggle in WA in December, January, my friend. Like, don't go there. When I played in, played in Perth, it was William Gallus's first game. He was coming off the bench. And we had 20, every 25 minutes, we had a drinks break. It was that hot. And he played the last, like, 15, 20 minutes. And there's an interview with him at Fox Sports. And they're asking questions. He goes, it's too hot. It's too hot, man. You can't play like this. I don't know how, how you play like this. And then later on at night, we were out on the town having a, having a drink. And I saw him down, saw him. We walked past him down the street. It was a gentleman with his agent. He had his hand in a massive Smith's Chips original packet with a magnum going, man, I just saw my first cat fight I ever seen. Two women. Just saw a crazy <laughs> place, man. Crazy place. And that's all I ever knew of William Gallus. <laughs> but let's send it to the listeners. Which players worked, which big signing worked, and which didn't? I'm going to be real with you to just do a blanket statement. The major, major names didn't have a good success rate. The level underneath, though, mm. like your Ola Toivonen's, your Shinji, Shinji Ono's. Ono, yeah. Um, Toivonen, what a player. Yeah. Toivonen yeah. was unbelievable, yeah, I, agree. I, bro. I would agree with you. Can I make a point, though, on that? It's it's also, when they come here, they've those players have come so old. At that point of time, the A-League wasn't necessarily a walk in the park either. Mm. You actually had to fucking give something to it to get something out of it. So, like, Del Piero was just like a consummate professional. He was doing everything. He had uh, 15 staff with him or something. Do you know what I mean? Don't forget so. Robbie Fowler. Yeah, I mean, Liam Miller was, yep. rest in peace. He was one of, I didn't know you played against him, right? Oh, great Magician, player. bro. Yeah. But Magician. That, see, you look at that level underneath, and then that level underneath is really where that sweet spot, like that Diego Castro, like. Mm. Diego Castro. Oh. Diego Castro Proper. and Ninkovic. Ninkovic. Yeah. I think uh, maybe the two best visas of all time. Broich. Broich, yes, but Ninkovic and Castro I were think, like for. Yeah, them two. Yeah, those um, Long, long. 
I guess just long term for success. Yeah. See, the, like you know, there's 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 tons here that are at that sort of what you would call like a not a premium, but like Help a yeah. Oh, bro, yeah, that's best. the best best two seasons a defender's ever had. Del Pierre was he yeah. had like he probably had like Virgil Van Dyke statistics where like he never lost a game at home. Yeah, he probably. never Virgil Van Dyke, by the way, has played how long at Liverpool? He's only lost two games ever at Anfield. Yeah, I I would I would argue I never saw him beaten. Yeah, he's in a he one, had in that one v one battle. De, De Silva, never. Damien De Silva had a bit of Del Pierre about him. Yeah, he was good too. Um, so yeah, I just think Damien um, oh, how good was he, man? Yeah, he year. was gone. Uh, look, for the league's sake, I hope he actually does well um, because it'll be a good um, promotion for the league. But again, we spoke about A-League marquees in the past. <sighs> They're so risky. But if it all works, Sydney FC have a great forward line this year, especially with that Moroccan that they signed. Um, Joe so, Lally. Joe Lally. So they've got, they've got players there and they are playing in the Asian Champions League. So that is another positive for them. But it's not looking good from what fans from previous. That's what. Hey, well oh, done by you. Sick. That's a great. Yeah, I thought. Let one me just, of those tweets was unbelievably personal as well. Oh, bro! <laughs> wow. Now, mind you, He's I only retired and has not assimilated. <laughs> yeah, yet. that is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Someone said they want to express their regrets to Sydney. Is in in Portuguese, in port. You know how sometimes when you translate Spanish yeah. and put to English, and it's like. It might hit a bit harsher or yeah, doesn't make yeah, as much yeah. sense. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully that's the case with that or else that is so <laughs> fucking brutal. It's brutal. Speaking of <laughs> speaking of brutality, did anyone see the video of the Everton players getting abused by their fans? Yeah, awful. No, okay. Um, no, I didn't. Yeah, okay. Train station. So long story short, Everton have been um, not great. <laughs> they haven't started well. It's only two games into the season. Um, and they were coming back from a loss... At the train station, they were buried off from the fans and the fans were giving it to them. Now, to the point of someone said, you're on fucking 80,000, uh, you're on 80,000 a week. Yeah. Yeah, he's like, you're fucking rat. Yeah. Like, mm. really, because more pay, Neil more pay is one of the biggest shithouser in football. I think he turned to one of the fans and said, fuck off. I think. Yeah, it looked like he it did. It looked like he did. And that riled he, up a new yeah. level of hate. Yeah. Yeah. What a character. So yeah. he, great character. He's a great character. Um, but I think I think there's levels to caring this much. Like, I'm all for fans saying, lift boys, fucking up. I'm, I'm all for that. But once you start yelling vile personal abuse like that, I, I, I don't see anything wrong with a player turning can around. I, I think can I, I think there's pretty sure, right, with one thing with Everton as well that's got to be factored in of why there's so much rage with this fan base is you've got to think there's a reason why they've had Ancelotti and Rafa Benitez as their managers in the last four or five years. I'm pretty sure they have ownership that has a pool of money, but you can only spend what you earn. And they've broken the financial fair play rules. True. And been deducted. They've been docked twice. Yes. Docked twice. Man yeah. City's still got 115 cases pending, which they've... Uh, Everton's just been pinged straight away. Yeah, and so their main the rivals. Fact that, the fact that they've stayed up in the Premier League is ridiculous at this point, but they can't... They have, they're not spending because they, they, they can't. Super, super Frank. That's Frank Lampard. Um, he kept them up, but... Sean Dyche did. Yeah, again... That they, they went for two. But, again, you, they're looking at their best rivals who are, who are in, in their pomp at the moment, Liverpool. Yeah. Their fans must be absolutely raging. They're getting a new stadium as well, so it's like, we want to stay in the Prem. Bro, I know. It'd be the best stadium in the championship history if yeah. they go down. Oh, bro. What, what do you think is the line for a fan, that fans cross? Well, I wanted to ask you. you. Oh. We've spoken to you about... Mm. We've spoken to you about the level of abuse and your take has been something along the lines of, I didn't know whether... They were taking the piss out of me, or, um, bro, you know you had a chant about you, but mm. like a, it was like a derogatory chant. Mm. I don't know if it was a chant. That, I don't know if they were actually saying anything derogatory. I think they were just being sarcastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, it was something like "give him the ball, he'll lose it" or something. Yeah. I don't remember the exact words. Did but that affect? Oh, actually, did that, I, didn't did, hear, I didn't know. Did about that? that one. Did that Thanks um, for bring that did, to my when, attention? I'm sorry. That, did that? Stop <laughs> <laughs> First off, you tell him he's worth nothing yeah. on a fucking chat GTP vote. You know, you tell him he can't kick a ball. He's the best potter. He's the third best potter in the world. He's worth something. <laughs> um, um, did, did that ever affect you? When when there was that, like, mm. I don't know. It was yeah, almost it, like people didn't necessarily 
but they might not have even watched you play and there might be saying something. Do you know yeah. what I mean? It was getting to that point. Yeah, I think um, I think I've said it before. Yeah. It, um, the hate stuff, did it affect me? Yes, of course. Like I'm a human being. Um, I felt like I was able to deal with it. Yeah, you definitely and did I was, well. I was able to deal with it. When it started getting sarcastic, that was when it became extremely challenging. Did the club, did anyone, did, who helps you in that situation? Does anyone, I would, I, you know what, football's that brutal that people don't always help people in that situation mm. until it gets too bad. I honestly, as much as we slammed AFL, I played a game of AFL like a few years ago for a joke. The camaraderie and like the way people mm. get around each other and when people are in the shit, how they actually try and pick them up is so different to the experiences we have. Like people yeah. will leave you hanging. Yeah, in yeah. your own dressing room with that shit. Yeah, I've no. Nah, my teammates were, were were good. To be fair, I didn't talk to too many of them. I remember, to be honest, I remember a um, specific conversation with Costa Barbarousis and asking him about that um, because it was during that time when it was like it's getting sarcastic. I was getting messages and stuff, and he kind of. I won't go into his personal side of what he said, but basically put me onto a, a, um, the man in the arena poem. I sent you that the other day. Oh, right. Um, and that, honestly, I feel like there is my life before I saw that quote mm. and then my life after It's that. a great point. Costa Barbarousas as well, whether we can class him as a visa player or not, what a fucking footballer. Mm. Oh, yeah. Go, goal yeah. machine, um, bro. We sp- but yeah, you also... So, s- keep going, yeah. Y- sorry, yeah. But yeah, in, in, in short, it did affect me and... Um, what are you saying? What are you? Well, sorry, what are you well saying? your take was always that at the end of the day, the fans pay their money. You've said that a few times. I just think it's a very slippery slope when you start trying to censor what fans can and can't do. Yeah. And I, I see things in black and white, which is why I said the handball, the handball rule should be if it touches the hand, it's it's yeah. a handball because I think it's then easier to know when someone's doing the wrong thing and when they've crossed the line or not. Same thing with fans. It's like. If you start telling them they can't, they can't scream or they can't say anything yeah. like any rude words or whatever, then it gets to the point where well, then you lose all the passionate side. Yep. So from my perspective, someone that received the negative end of that stick, I would still say for the enjoyment of the spectacle of the game, I would allow fans to behave the way football fans behave. Where the line is... I don't know is my I answer. You, I'm sorry I to t- sit on the fence. Where the, I don't know. Where I tell the line. you where the line. Wanna, can I just ask you personally? Yeah. What abuse have you copped? Um, or not much. I cop, probably copped a bit of abuse when I played NPL, but I was like, I don't give a fuck. It's NPL. Okay, so there you was nothing I mean? on the level of, of rash with the sarcasm and. Nah, 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 nah. Rashid was. Fr- it was pretty. F- like that was probably one of the first of its kind from a young player's point of view. Oh yeah. Also. Yeah. Like, not so, not trying to uh, degrade Adelaide. Adelaide was a big club. So, if you weren't playing well, it would, like, people would fucking shoot you down. I never really played bad there. But when you play for victory, it's like everyone's watching you. Do you know what I mean? Like, as when you're, when you're not a part of victory or Sydney FC, as a, a, another team, they're the away games you look forward to. Yeah. Do you know you what I mean? You want to beat them. Yeah. But, and also because, you know, like, back then, or at least at the time, it's a packed stadium. Yep. So... Um, the one one thing I will say with a fan cross, which is one of the most craziest things we've ever seen. Do you remember the Aston Villa Birmingham game yep. when yep. the Birmingham fuck hooligan came on, cooked Jack Grealish, mm-hmm. uh, at, oh, like yeah. assaulted him, and then Grealish scored the winner yeah, down the yeah. other end, like same game. Yep. I mean yeah. that is crazy. Yeah, I, I think as a fan, um, I agree with what Rash said that you really can't. Obviously, there are certain things like if you're in the crowd doing. I think racism is one that's, yep, ban them. And then if you're going, if you're getting extremely vulgar, like if you're talking about words that I'm not even going to mention on here because we'll get demonetized. Well, we're you know, making no money anyway. Um, <laughs> but words on here, <laughs> right, that, you know, the R word and the R, the four-letter R word. Yeah. So, like, if you're saying stuff like that and involving those, t- okay, out. But if in, in terms of if it's just like you're fucking this, you're fucking that... Mate, that's been that's sports. That's every sport. And I will say this because I've experienced it at live sport in Australia, more so at the AFL. If you don't want your kids hearing swearing, sit in a family zone. That's it. Like, I'm not going to sit front row at the G, for instance, and have some lady turn around and say, there's kids here. Like, mate, look where you are. Like, go sit on level four or something. Like, 
Even at, even at the A League. Well, like, if you're in the terrace, you should be allowed to scream your head off without some family turning to you and saying, Excuse me, there's kids here. Don't sit here. It's the active area. Well, the, even me, right? When I first started playing football at Springville White Eagles, before I learned how to kick the ball, the first word I learned was Yeb Empty Mate. Well, that's it. That's it. So. You know, MPL is a bit – it's funnier because it's um closer to you and, like, you're going to have people yelling stuff to you. It even happened on my brother's game at the weekend. Mm. I think there's something to be said about following the players afterwards. That's weird. So going – talking to them at the train station. Yeah, that's weird. Uh, abusing them the through social media. Yeah. When they're at home with their family, when they're walking down the – that starts to be – Yeah, of course. Okay, you're invading into their life, their yeah. personal life. Now I think that starts to be – You pay to watch them play the game – not to yeah. just interfere with their, their everyday life. So while yeah. the game is on, everyone says stuff in the heat of the moment. Like, yeah. <laughs> how's, how funny is this? When my brother was playing Hampton Park the other week, there was a bunch of um, guys on the sideline from Hampton Park giving it to my brother. My brother was like, shut the fuck up, cunt. Rah, 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 rah. Yeah. The guy was responding to everyone except my brother. He comes up to my brother at the end. He goes, hey, are you so-and-so's son? And he's like, yeah. And he goes, oh, I know your mum well. My brother's like, I'm so sorry, bro. <laughs> like, yeah. Funny things can happen like that in local football. But then it's this is the other side. I just don't get why anyone would be doing that and saying that. It's like I've you've heard grown men oh, yeah. that are old enough to be the person's father. Grandfather even. Grandfather. <laughs> yeah. And it's a kid on the park. Yes. And they're abusing them like that. Yep. yep. It's like, why would you be doing that? What? What? I think, well, <laughs> a few things are, it's gone, gone back to what I said. I'm not justifying it at all, but I think this is what their mindset is. First of all, some people, it's the only thing they look forward to in their life. So they take everything ultra, yeah. ultra to the point of like, you're taking it too far. Um, again, if you're, uh, if you're coming from a certain area and you've been brought up a certain way, because you got to think, right, if you're a 50 year old and you're spurting that shit, you started going to football in the eighties and the nineties mm -hmm. where anything went, anything goes. People are smoking ciggies in the stadium. People are getting bashed, whatever. Now, because the times have changed as well. It's like, well, they're even with footballers and coaches, like you can't speak to players the same way you used to back in the eighties. Mm -hmm. They used to tell, they used to scream personal shit at them that now there'd be a lawsuit. So it's also got to do with times changing as well. But again, some things never change. If you go to the football with your grandfather, I went to a Millwall game, shitting my pants, mm. right? I may try to change my phone screensaver from off the Chelsea because if anyone saw that, <laughs> I went to a Millwall game, cup game, and I'm looking at this grandfather and his grandson, right? And this guy, is, is, he's given it. He's given it. And the kid's there, and I'm just thinking, this kid is just taking everything on board mm. and he's going to say the exact same shit. He's going to say the exact same shit. Borderline racist shit. Um, you know, patriotic to the point of there might be something wrong with you. Um, and I'm looking and just thinking, yeah, like your grandfather's swearing like that in front of you. You're four or five years old. I see how it passes down through the family. <laughs> but then, but then it, it, always, it also comes back to these people that have sent the message saying these players shouldn't be get, getting paid certain things that they should be getting paid. It's so like if you're a player and you're able to deal with that stuff and still perform. Oh. It's like imagine you're an accountant and you're trying to write documents and I'm next to you going, yeah, yep. Yep. try to write straight. I wouldn't. Yeah, comp I'll the, put the pen com in their the eye. company switch. <laughs> <laughs> you, well, you know what though? We, as much as we talk about the, the, as a player, the pro and con, if you play well, you do get lifted up. Exactly. So it goes both it's ways, you know? It. It's just it. when you sink down, it, it does. But it's very lightweight in the A-League, isn't it? Well, in comparison to fuck yeah, Harry Maguire type and stuff. And Even at the end of the Plate, day, River Plate, Boca Juniors. Yeah. It's life end, or death, man. At the end of Do the day, know? sticks and stones will break my bones and words can only cause permanent psychological damage. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's what they need to change it to. to my uncle, Frank Bro, Woodley. Hey, top potter, man. Top potter. He's <laughs> is that a Woodley? Is that a Woody up. one? Yeah. That, hey. <laughs> Frank Woodley, man. Well, legend. I tell you what, if we had any other form of a format of a show, he would have to be on this show. <laughs> but I just don't know if it would make sense. Um, yeah, I think the A-League, though, is um, it's very light in comparison. But there are some people that, you know... It's uh, still there, though. It's still there, hundred percent. MPLs might be worse than A League. <laughs> yeah, I reckon. <laughs> well, MPL, there's still a bit of like they can actually get you in the car park. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, yeah. But it's also funnier. Yeah, like it's yeah. also funnier in the MPL. Like, it used to happen when we we 
we would play, especially when you're an A League player coming and playing. Yeah, that's like that's it's, the it's worst even part. Funnier. That was I, every mm. single week some some of that shit. But like mm. I, that, who give? I never gave a fuck about. I it. had someone tell me. I'm not going to say who it is. I had someone tell me last week that when Scott Jamison played against their team, that they were saying they were yelling out extremely personal shit to him, and he's like. I'll see you after. I'll see you after. Like yeah, well, in the NPL, well, it's at well, ground I, I level. I understand that though. Yeah. It's at ground level mm. because, like Jake said, you really can see them in the car he can, park. He can see in here. Yeah. Whereas yeah. you can give it to big and at the at the, the A League, and no one's going to touch you. Mm. Yeah. I reckon like, at the pro pro level, most of them probably don't even manage their social media. Oh, 100%. percent. Yeah. Do you? But did you hear when when there was like thirty thousand? Would you hear comments towards you? I was too too muffled. No, nah, you can't. No. Nah. See, at the NPL, you yeah. do. At the what? At the NPL, you do. Yeah, yeah. You hear, you hear. Yeah. You know you the one so. thing you hear when you play in the, the A League is if, if you give a ball away, the oh, oh. yeah. <laughs> what about which I defies maybe worse than a personal thing saying your shit. Wait, yeah. like oh, when you hear that, it's worse than you're the, the, the natural stadium. emotion just kill the whole stadium. Yeah. What about the one the other day <laughs> when Tottenham were taking a corner and they went back to the keeper and everyone was like, oh no. Ah <laughs> oh, no! Ah oh, no! Yeah. Yeah. Actually, you know, we spoke about Vince Rigari last week. Yeah, he bought he a just, book out. Yeah, saw that. Yeah, okay. yeah. That's um. What about Raquel May when he got spat on, mm. taking the corner? I don't mind. Yeah. Came, well, that's the other thing. The other thing that we okay people sarcastically chanting my name in comparison to in South America, where you literally, if you're playing badly, you have to look out for your life. When yeah. you walk down the street, you can't like go the security your guards. Shopping. What about when they walk off okay. the pitch? Security guards are literally covering their yeah. the player's head. Yeah. Even the fig- with the figo with the pig's head and stuff like it. it mm. yeah. You know, but then again, Rash, <laughs> I always privileged. I always stand by this though, Rash. Mm. It's all about your circumstances. If that's the worst thing that's happened to you in the A League, then it is the worst thing that's happened to you. That's true. Because and I know you were in that stand singing abuse to me. By the way, oh yeah, burner account. I don't. I don't ever. I don't ever think I abuse you, but there definitely was some times I'm like, "Fuck's sake!" Like I got to got to that, and that's fair enough. Yeah. I was saying that myself. Oh, I recant. Truce. Now kiss. <laughs> now kiss. Okay, let's get into it. And into it. We're an hour and a half in, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's get started. Are we going to need fucking Uber Eats again in this <laughs> one or what? <laughs> All right, let's get started. Let's get, all right, guys, let's get that pod fitness. Talk about the best potter in the world. One of the main one of the main features you need is pod fitness. I haven't even done the intro. You have not even, you've not even tied a shoelace. Yet. No, no. Yeah. So I'm about what to- I would love to know is with his pod fitness, what happened on the unlaced that day when he started losing his mind? Which, but uh, he's never done that on here though. I know, he ran like out he, of he, gas. He ran out of gas. It was about he an hour. Get, it was about an hour. No, I he had was with too- he was with Eves Basuma, but and spoken. No, no, no. I had I had too much gas. I thought, let me just turn this up. <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it was good. It We're was at good. rolling media. Let me turn this bitch up. <laughs> um, I have, should, I have a game. We should actually do a pod. One. Oh, sorry. Okay. I have a game. You're not in this game. I oh, know. Okay, okay. You're too good for this game, Jake. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> he called me. He called me today. He goes, "Hey, man, I think I've got a game, but you're going to get it. So I'm going to have to take you out." I go. All right, I just want you to make sure you say that on the pod, <laughs> just so people know that. Hey, yeah, yeah. What is campeon, it? man, campeon. The game is Football knowledge or something. Nah, the game is. <laughs> I feel like you two are sort of even in this field, so I think it'll be a good battle. Mm-hmm. The game is new football slang, or in other words, football Twitter slang. Mm. Now I'm going to say a phrase or a, or a word, and you guys are going to try to guess what it is. Now your name okay. is your buzzer. Okay. Just to intervene quickly, I don't really have a natural confidence about anything you've just said there. So maybe. So you thought it was going to be some other shit? I thought, yeah. I no, I feel I like you would still win this. I'll take myself out, but yeah. I don't think I know what he's talking about. I mean, include him in round one. Okay, you know what? I'll, do you want to just include you and see if you really can live up to your name? Well, yeah, I'll, I'll hit my buzzer if I know, but it let them go first, maybe just to. So this is on Twitter or what? If, if or I just hit my, all round? Yeah. If I hit my buzzer first, I'll let them go first. It started on Twitter, but now everyone uses it everywhere. Oh, okay. AU ballers use it in their vids. Everyone, oh. this is the new generational oh. football slang. Mm. Okay? okay? Name is your buzzer, please. Right, mm. do, not, okay. do not yell out your thing. It's the acronym YDKB. YDKB. Name is your buzzer. YDKB. YDKD. YDKB. I don't know. Lord. 
Lord. You don't know ball? Yes! Why DKV? Well, I think I'm dyslexic. <laughs> when, you said, when you said why, I was thinking W. Well that's done. Right. Is that dyslexic? Oh, same. I was that's thinking it. W. Is why? why? I was thinking like- If someone says why and you think W. I was thinking right. why. I was hey, thinking WYD, like what you're doing. <laughs> okay. Rash wins the whole thing. <laughs> nah, next one. Nice Next one, one though, Rashid. That was good. All yeah. these little kids. All right, let's go. Now, yes, now, now I get the game. All right, you're in Sorry, it. You're in it. Ga- now I get the game. Let's you're in it. Go, it's man. Okay, game. can we keep score 1 0? It's a good game. Yeah. The next one should be not that hard, but we'll see. Remontada. 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 Spanish? Remontada. Remontada. I'll go, Gav. Gav, what do you think it means? Like, you're bringing yourself back in the game. <sighs> Like you're, you're stroking, you're trying to get if back you into get it. That, that is unbelievable. Hold on, is it just a Spanish word? I, I'm like not going to. Oh, I, like, I feel like giving you half a point. Give him half. Oh, I'll no, give you no, half. No, no, no half. Are you, you going to get that? Remontada. Like, like it's either it's right or it's wrong, bro. <laughs> okay, it's more wrong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's so close, Gav. Like, Ooh, I feel well, that bad. Sounds if like Rash wasn't up my ass, I would have given you a point. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Remontada. Oh, I'm just going off his answers now. I don't even know what it means. Remontada. <laughs> Let's just work off that. Yeah. I've got, yeah. Is this being used here? Like in, in It's used if with the young kids, man. Really? Yeah. Remontada. In us. In us. I've I've heard people oh, in, in I'm us. clueless. So you're gonna you're gonna bail out? I'm clueless. I'm Gareth Bailey, man. Okay, yeah. bailed out. Gareth Bale, man. Yeah. Damn, so that okay. A remontada is basically a comeback. Oh, that's pretty close. What did you say? He Eight. said when a player's trying to get into back into the rhythm. Oh. Yeah, like digging deep. That's why I was like, a remontada is like, oh my God, like if Chelsea do well this year, Chelsea remontada, we're back. Oh. You know but what I mean? In Spanish, it would be remando. Dude, I, you know what? This is like now, I'm, I'm starting I'm, to realise we're getting in. a bit older. Remando. Yeah, yeah. I'm young. I know we're all starting, We're starting next. to move into a next, next. next generation. Okay. Let's go. Inject remando it. Inject it. Inject it? Yep, inject it. Gav. Remontada. Getting back into the game. <laughs> huh? Like he's getting back. Nope. Uh, uh, Jay, your speed. Nope. Fuck. So now I can take my time. Yeah, but say your name. Yeah, but say this thing again. Inject it. Use your buzzer. So are we out. Me and Jake out. Yeah, yeah. Use your use. Oh, so it's one hit. Yeah, it's one. He's a one hit wonder. Oh damn! I would have thought more about Shit. it. What was yours? Sunday what did you say? It's Turn it on. You can't remember. He said speed. <laughs> Lord. Fucking doggy dog, man. Okay. Lord. Lord. <laughs> yeah, Lord. Put Cole Palmer in. No. Okay. Injected is when something good happens. Crazy. That you, for you. So like if Man United lose, I'll be like, oh, Man United lost. Inject it. Wow. That is crazy. What? Yeah. Like inject it into my blood. Like. More of that. Yeah, like more of that. Like inject it. Like oh, Cole Palmer hat trick. Inject so it. So we're doing it. We're doing an opioid. We're doing an opioid okay. metaphor. Yeah, but it's more into your. It's more putting something into your bloodstream. It could be Which Panadol. What, yeah, okay, yeah. imagine that. Imagine well, you're going to like, old you man. want more. Basically. Yeah, you want more. Basically, yeah. can imagine you see that. what's wrong with that at any level? I didn't make it. Up. I didn't make it. Up. <laughs> I'm not saying. But <laughs> imagine you're very me pro at like twelve. <laughs> hey, Dad, just scored three. Inject it. Yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. okay. Hopefully not. Hey, Mum, Dad, inject that, huh? All right, come on, boys. Next one. Yeah, inject it. What's the scores? One one. One, I'm, I'm, zero. Point? I'm zero. Oh, got to be mine. Okay, fine. I'll give Gavin a point. Because that's not even how it's said in Spanish. Yeah. So whatever one, kids made that up. One, zero. Yeah. Okay, next one. Idolo. Lord. Uh, uh, yep. Idol. Fuck's yep. sake. That that's an easy, easy one. Easy. Yep. But Idolo. I was fast. They use it. They Idolo. use it. But that's that's how it is. Next Paris. one. Feast. Lord. Lord. Um. Uh, yeah. Uh, Three. Two. Uh, one get into it. No, I'm not giving that. Sorry, Lord. So it's feast. Yeah, feast slash feasting. Uh, Jake, Jake, tackle. Nope. All right, I'll go, Gav. Um, like you're killing it. No, you've had feast. A feast. Feast is if you're a fan, uh. and again, if they're playing well, or whatever, we're feasting. He, we, we, uh, it's a feast. Who's saying this? What generation, okay. by the way? The new. Ge- I think it's what is it? Alpha. Is it called Generation no Alpha? F- fucking losing to Solomon Islands and stuff. Come on, guys. Okay, this one. Ready? Clear. Hold on. What? That's just a word. It is. Uh, 
Is it? It's not. It can't be as obvious as it is, or can it? Clear number ten. Yep. Um, k- kick it long. Nope. Yeah, that's all I know. It as. <laughs> no, oh my god, you guys are old. Yeah, yeah we're, we're yeah. young, nor. But how old are you? I'm just. I'm, I'm trying to say it in the in the lingo. Yeah, clear, bro. Yeah. Leah. Yeah. Don't, don't do that. All right, Gav. Gav. No, nah, he might be onto something. Hey, Gav. He's, I said Gav. Okay, Gav. Clear. Clear, clear, clear is like. Clear is like. Um, yeah, I'm clear. Like we're clear. Like we're forty up and we're winning. We're clear. Yeah. Yes, Gavin. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Hold on, hold on. Did he buzz? Yes, did, he, did. Buzz. he did. He did. Uh, he didn't. Wait, use... but hasn't he given two answers? No, no I said like I'm clear. One. We're clear, boys. Oh, we're clear. Really? What is it? Yeah, it's like, like boys. You hey. should have let him keep going. <laughs> like he scored another, he fought him up. Boys, we're clear. All good. We're clear. We or it could mean that that's true. Or it could mean like, oh, yeah, like Palmer's clear of sucker. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like he's Honey. clear. Yeah, okay. He's so clear. He's like way ahead. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay, this one I want you guys to give me an example of how to use it. All right. Merchant, Lord, Lord, Gold Merchant. Gold merchant, sorry. I'll give it. Yep, I'll give it. I'll give right. it. Yep. Usually it's derogatory, but I'll give that. Uh, yep. that, well, that, that gold, being, gold merchant is it derogatory, is it? No, like someone might say he's a tapping merchant. Right. Yeah, or someone might say he's a penalty uh, merchant. So he's like, so, six, he's a bit of rude value. You can have it. Right? I'm on three. Yeah? Yep, yep. Three, two. Three, two. Yeah. Zero. I reckon you've given him a little bit there. What? A gold That's, merchant. Did he say gold or gold? Gold, gold, gold. Oh, I heard gold. You I accidentally say, put a D on the end, but I meant gold. You <laughs> could say speed merchant. Yeah, correct. Like Adama Traore is a speed merchant. So like Van Nistelrooy is a bit of a merchant. Like happy off, merchant. Off the knee. Yeah, he's a yeah. yeah. Ugly, ugly goals. Oh, I love, yeah. I'd love to be a merchant, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing better. Mm. Again, good. a lot of these sort of are the same, but they're used in different ways. The next one, cook. Lord. Lord. That's easy. That's an easy one. Just you, you're cooking, bro. You're cooking, bro. Um, yeah. Steph Curry in. Okay, yep. My lord's too quick, man. We're paying that. He's Steph Curry in cooking. He, yeah, it's a you're football. Killing it. You're killing it. You're killing you're it. it. Yeah, let him cook. Him. Just let him cook. Hey, hey, hey. We're it, bro. The real, <laughs> yeah, I knew we had. I was making him earn it. The real <laughs> phase is let him cook. Hey, if I'm not gonna put any, if right? I'm not gonna put any scoreboard pressure, I'm gonna make <laughs> yeah. just throw some fucking diamonds out there, bro, bro. That's what I said at fives. I said if we're not gonna win a game, I'm gonna ruin everyone else's yeah, night. Yeah, that's what I do, bro. <laughs> hey, he, did just that come with that people, come from bro. Drake and Steph Curry? What? Did that come from that? I don't know if they started. What was it? the player for Brian? Curry? What was the uh, Brian player that you used to always do that? Jeff Brown with the that? Pop boy for Arsenal. Who? Three sixty with the wrist boy. No, what about the Arsenal player? That went, then went to Bayern and you used to always do this celebration. Nabri. Yeah. yeah. Sarch. Nabri, wasn't uh, that that? Yeah, Harden. Yeah. James Harden. James okay. Harden. Um, boys, be quick. Get some points. Oh, he's <laughs> Next one. Cook, can be not or not yeah, that's cooked, I reckon. Mm. Like he's cooked or he got cooked. Dub. That uh, Jake, yep, win. Yes, oh, get on the chat. board, man. Oh. Get on the board. He's <laughs> coming. He's coming. He's stuck he's, in his way. He's good with W's. He's I'm young. I'm young. <laughs> yeah, uh, is that a Y or a W? <laughs> Next one. I want you to explain to me what this means. Banter FC. Oh, I just hate hearing that. I'm not even going. Oh uh, wait, is that is part of the game? Yeah, Gav. Oh, number two. Gavin. Oh, you said your name. Banter FC is like he's the he's the guy that takes the piss all the time. Nope. Um. <laughs> Uh, uh, <laughs> so, were you number, sure about that? He's, number he's ten, so confident. Number well, ten, it's easy. It's, it's, it's one of two things. I'm gonna just go with my gut. It's a poor player, bad player. No, not not Enter very good. No. Lord's Lord. got a chance here to just sweep in. Lord, Lord, uh, it's a joke of a team. Yes. Oh, wow, and you sense. know what? Yeah. That was going to be my my next. Oh one. my god! Makes sense, because yeah. of the FC, I was like, it's got to yeah. mean a, it's got to be a broader squad. It's got to squ- squad. What was team. it? What was it? Banter FC. So like I was I went for individual, not the team. Oh. <laughs> like you banter them. See, like there's fucking. Yeah, you, you just wait your turn, yeah. Jake. Yeah. Last Fuck one, see. Jake. Get on the board again. Okay. This <laughs> you should. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Rash so just draw. ran oh, with it. Yeah, he's gone clear. He's cooked. He's cooking. Generational. Lord, Lord, uh, he's fucking. He's not even breathing over there, man. It's a generational talent. Yep, Lord's too good. Wonder kid. Yeah. That's is that one of them? Isn't it? Clap it off for Lord. What the fuck? <laughs> hey, man, you're. You know what? Can I go? He's coaching, he's coaching the alphas, bro. He's coaching that gen, bro. Can I go, oh, Jerome? You can start talking I want to between him you three. I reckon the Spanish version's way better. Ooh. All right. Well, okay. What's, how much time do we have? Quick. What's Spanish version. Fuck. Quick. I mean, 
Yeah. Real quick. Whoa. I know, I, I so know. So this is for a player. Players only, Can you just individual do player. Individual player. Fire extinguisher. In, extinguisher. What? Mata Fuego. What type of player is that? He's in your team. What is he? Fire extinguisher? Yeah. Jerome. He, uh, he, I didn't even realise we were playing. Oh, okay go. then. Okay, go. Uh, he cleans up like he's a DM or something. He nah. just puts oh, sorry, out the I fires. Sorry. Fire extinguisher. He can't even say that. Mata Fuego. <laughs> Mata Fuego. Go. What is it? Okay. Um... Uh, Jake, uh, tranquil. Nah. Lord, sweeper. Nah, he's in the squad just in case we need him. Mm, okay. okay, I see how that works. Yep. yep. A, yep. B. A B. A B. Um, uh, Jerome. Fuck it. What? A B is, uh, he's just buzzing around. Nah. He's just yeah, fucking. That's not bad. Go. <laughs> um, Go. It's uh, easy. Think about it. It's easy. What's got to do with the? Is a joke here? Nor timestamp this. Yeah, it's easy. Rush, just think, man. What a, what happens to bees? Uh, they they die if they sting someone. So, so someone that gets fucking injured or some shit all the gets time. Gets tackled, he's off. Soft blasted. Yeah, Jack, I'm on the ball. Come on, that. come on. Okay, oh, man. Fuck so South has America. Has he got that point? Yeah. Okay. It doesn't even make sense. A bee tackles someone else. No, he off. gets stung. He's done. <laughs> no, no, Rash is right. When a bee stings someone, the bee dies. Yeah. <laughs> the person just puts a bit of ice on it. <laughs> he's got it in two footed someone. Yeah, he ron barassi. That happens, it. hey, that happens. He ron barassi. Right. It. El ron barassi. Barassio. Viagra gone wrong. Viagra, malecha. Uh, Jerome, when you go in too hard and you injure yourself. No. Oh, these are shit. <laughs> I love that he's got them all wrong. This is the last the one. First to say Jerome. This is the last one, by the way. I, I, can't, I don't know if I'm going to get that one. We have amateur number nine agents. that can't hold anything up. I just said the last one. That was the answer for for Yagra. Oh, okay. Sorry, Gav. I apologize. All the listeners, I think I yell at Gav. I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, he just reminded me. He just reminded me of something funny, bro. When I was, you know what the banter was. Do you know what the banter was 10 years ago? I was on trial at Reading, and like these two, these two African boys were going at each other, and one of them goes. Bro, shut up, man. Your mum's a hold-up striker. <laughs> Jesus. Like, meaning hold-up strikers are the unattractive form of a striker. Yeah. So he's like, your mum's a, your mum's a hold-up striker. It's like, wait, your mum's a centre-half. Like, <laughs> shut up, bro. I know a guy <laughs> that you know as well. Yeah. That has a serious illness with making everything a football reference when it comes to girls. Like, <laughs> oh, bro, you were in the under-23s. Then I brought you up to the first team. Now I have to bench you. Like, oh, yeah. oh my God. Bro, that is an MPL thing, man. Yeah. That is an MPL trait. Yeah, he does it. He yeah. does it, bro. Yeah, he does it. Too well, many years in the MPL. Playing, relating, champ- playing Champions League. Yeah, yeah. Relating, like, dating game to football Santiago. analogies. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Saturday nights at Santiago Bernabeu. What's yeah. up, booters? Sorry to interrupt your episode, but we have to give a big call out to a partner of this show, ProTape Australia. They are our first sponsor, our first supporter of the show. And I'm very proud to talk about this because this is not any tape. This is the tape that you've been stealing from your physios, your doctors, and your potential partners for years and years, just to strap your shin pads without having the duct tape or the pain of ripping your hair off your skin. This is the best tape going around. It's in six or seven A-League clubs. Lewis Nani, when he was here at Melbourne Victory, was wearing it every week. So much so when he went to Turkey, he was asking for packages to be delivered of it. It is a very special tape. It is our first supporter of the podcast as well. They come in all sorts of colors. They are perfect to go under your sock, on top of your sock. It never comes off. It's water resistant. We have a 25% off discount code for you as well. Suited and booted, 24. If you go into the bio, you can go into the website, buy yourself some merch. Also, if you are a football club out there and you want to buy in bulk, email the email handle that we have in the bio and you'll get a better price for it as well. It is an up and coming brand that is working with the biggest clubs in the land. They want to come to you as well. Get around them. I'm going to be wearing them at the NPL Legends game next month as well. So there we go. Pro Tape Australia, everyone. Let's get back into the episode. Welcome back to the pod. And we are about to do our favorite segment of the week. Brought to you by Pro Tape Australia, Amateur Agents. Oh, we love this segment. We love a good amateur agents. And again, we got hundreds of uh, hundreds of messages 
from you little anonymous baddies out there. And um, <laughs> the first one's a little bit of a light one. We'll get it out of the way. What's up, boys? Listen to the last pod where you said Jarogba has to shave his head yes. after a certain number of five-star ratings. I think it's only fair Gavin has to shave his beard and grow out his hair too. Wow. I didn't write that. <laughs> Whoever's that, who oh. did that is a fucking legend. Yeah. Um, wait, didn't we come to a conclusion we would change up? The shaving head was unfair. I think. Yeah, balls, what did we I say, think. Balls. What did we say? We said if we get to 1,000 uh, 1, yep. people to our ratings, what yep. were we going to ask you to do? I think let's just do me. I've got to lose 10 kilos. How does that sound? Fuck, that's mad, bro. In what space of time? Um, <laughs> Over 10 years. <laughs> Otherwise, <laughs> if my podcast does yeah. not grow, I will just keep okay. digging. I'll dig okay. my own grave. <laughs> what about this? What about this? Fuck. You have to lose 10 ki- kilos and and post about it. Post oh the journey. I, but what if I want to start tomorrow? So I sort of sort of... Nah, just, I, well, let's say post the journey is not have a gut out top. It is just post the scales. The improvement. Yeah, I can yeah, do that. Just like yeah, at just the update, gym, I'm here, I'm doing update, this today. You can have the top on, just get say ready I've with gone me. from... You know, 100 Yeah, when we get to the amount of kilos, when we get to 1,000. Certain amount of kilos what, to then come you, in the suit. How much do you actually know? Don't tell us. No, I don't know. No. Get ready with me, Dean. You're lightweight, bro. You got light feet. Now, I'm going to make one for you guys as well. Get me suited. Don't worry. What? What? Get me suited. Get you suited. 1,000 yeah, ratings. Jerome was 10 kilos. Get everyone. Jerome suited. Let's go, baby. Fuck. We'll get 1, him, we'll get, ratings. Oh, yeah, that's what it was. It was to get you in a suit. Yeah. Oh, that's Also, the, grow I, out his head is the funniest thing ever. Yeah, and shave his head. <laughs> the fact that it's not going to grow. <laughs> Isn't that like, so that's funny? Why no, 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 Gavin, you can have a mullet <laughs> like, and nothing whoever, at the front. Whoever that was, can we dial them in that's for a That's called a skullet. Can we dial them in? <laughs> yeah, I'll can get the skullet. Can you contact that person and say, hey, I, man, I we can't, can't dial you in? Because that's a diehard Buddha. I can't. I'm sorry, just off the little segue. Um... The player from Celtic, the captain, what was his name? The Scott, Craig? Brown. Mm. Scott, Brown. Scott Brown. Scott Brown. Scott Brown. How he used to shave his head. He was never actually bald. Yeah. He used to make himself B- bald. BBC. Ball by choice. Ball by choice. Yeah. <laughs> Sebastian Veron. Who else was BBC? Uh, was it, uh, <laughs> Mateta. Yeah. yeah, there was a guy on <laughs> Filthy that was BBC. <laughs> Johnny Sebastian, Sins. Sebastian oh. Veron as well. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't Sebastian he look like him? <laughs> <laughs> Nor looks like Sebastian Veron. One <laughs> Bold by choice. Johnny wow. Sins. Jo- I don't know if so. I think Bold by choice think is such a ridiculous yeah, fucking That video. is another That's Twitter good. little lingo thing, huh? You and I was me. thinking you were saying you something got me, completely bro. different. Yeah, you, got me you thought now. I was news company. I know where your head was I going. I wouldn't mind the skullet. Okay, so cool. If we get one more follower this week, you need a skullet. What's a skullet? A uh, bald in the front, party in the back. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> skullet. Yeah, right. um, okay, let's get into them. Let's let's knock through these and give actually good advice and not laugh at people's misfortunes. <laughs> <laughs> Is college in America a good idea for a twenty-year-old player? Love the pod, lads. I don't know enough about college football. Bro. I'd say it's only good if you end up being a pro after it. And if is the MLS the draft? Do you back yourself to get into the draft? If you don't and you just and you want to go for an experience, go for an experience. But or if you want to be like just like that, I don't know yeah. of any. I don't know of any Australian player that's gone to a college and gone in the draft to the MLS. That's what I was going to ask. Mm. So is there any success stories? From I do. That I have I seen a few so. players actually go over, play uh, USL one and USL, and then come back to the A League. But I've had we've had I've had people that have gone there and they'll like fifteen years later they talk about they're glad they did it. Like mm. from an experience point of view. I think I, experience you, wise, like just, from a, you know, just from a life, yeah. lifestyle Fantastic. and have 100%. fun. You know. Any experience overseas. I think the Argentinian route is underrated, by the way. But anyway, move on. I, I added in player, but I'm assuming he meant football player, not just asking us, should a 20 year old go to college? Just off. Oh, okay. <laughs> but is I'm he assuming. asking about just part, like just partying? <laughs> like, is, it, is college in America a good idea for a 20 year old? Love the pod, lads, but it's a football podcast. So why would you. Why would you just want to go to college? <laughs> well, just, I mean, you, you can go swim burn. <laughs> He's questioning us about college too. Yeah. yeah. Look, yeah, not one of us went. <laughs> As you know, I, I mistaked the W for a while before. So, brother, you've yeah. come to the wrong place. I went for and, one day. But if it is, yeah, footballer, serious answer. I don't know if there is any player that has successfully done that and then played pro after it from Australia. Uh, I don't know if Correct it's Correct us if we're idea. wrong. I'm 14. Yeah, no. Yeah. How many Aussies go to Argentina at like Zero. 22 years old or something? Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah, I th- I'd say 22 is a, it's, it's a bit 
It's a bit late. It's, like, it's not late to make it as a pro, but I would say you want to go through your development years when you're training and stuff. Because If I, I had kids, do- honestly, if I had kids and I wanted them to be footballers and I reckon they had half a chance, I wouldn't stay here. I'd move overseas. Don't say that. We're trying to grow the game. That's just being honest. Uh, <laughs> That's just bold. being honest. It's Think about your answer. <laughs> I know. No, I, it's, it's hard because I would, against, for example, go to college or go to Argentina. I would send the kid to Argentina. Oh, why the? I wouldn't and even that sounds crazy because, like, yeah. educational side, it's probably a terrible idea. I hate but America. now you can do education online. Yeah. You can get around it. Go to Argentina. Gav turned out fine, sort of. Um, I'm 14. Just partially tore my ACL and I'm out for 12 to 16 weeks. Damn. I can't trial now for next season for any clubs. What do I do? Do you rehab? Um, get back. If you have, you if can. you have footage of your games, do could find a way to create a highlight reel. Good advice. And then you, then they can see you play. And you're 14. You're 14. You're still so young. Partially torn isn't as bad as completely torn. But also, when you, I sympathise when you're 14. That feels like it's the end of the world. Yeah. So to Gab's point, don't let it be the end of the Take world. Take it one day at a time, bro or sis. But get it, get a highlight reel, bro. And um, yeah, just do your rehab properly because the last thing you want to do is rush it, and then I'm you know, come back and do some more damage. So just get that done properly, and um, hopefully the pod will uh, get you through these a uh, couple of weeks. Just follow my TikToks. Yeah, all that. Um, oh, this is a good one, Rash. Why do coaches in Australia only coach systems instead of coaching or improving players? The reason Real Madrid would beat Hume is not because Real Madrid play 4-3-3 and Hume play 4-4-2. It's because their players are better. Name a system Luka Modric could not play well in. What a dumb... So, wait, wait, wait. I don't think he needed Repeat to Repeat the, the question. I, I, didn't, I didn't quite... Because didn't the last <laughs> part <laughs> contradict no the sense. whole... Yeah. Yeah. Madrid versus Hume. <laughs> he lost me at that. Did, did, did he put, no, put his age in? Nah, let him cook. No, hold on, seriously let him though. Cook. Let him because, did he put his age okay, in? So I'll give I'll give a partial <laughs> answer. I think the whole world teaches systems very young now, and I think that's partly why we're not seeing great individuals develop now. So that's one side. I don't. Does the end of that contradict the whole? The front part? I think what he's trying to say so is... Luke could play, he's saying a good player can play in any system, but yes. how do we make good players first before the system is... Yeah, I assume that's what he means. Yeah. Mm. Like I, he's basically I, I saying, do agree with him at some stage. Yeah, I, I just the wrong tune. <laughs> that's last hilarious. That's I just great, think by the way. It's great. Well it, done. I think he is right. I think <clears throat> junior football should be a lot more focused on technique and then you learn the system. Mm. And then, obviously, that is a big difference. Like... Even my, my time growing up in Argentina, we barely work on, worked on systems. We just worked on how to control the ball, doing the best. At the end of the day, you look at it like this. If you can control the ball, you can end up doing anything. If you don't know how to control it, then you can't play the game. Typically right? coaches, so firstly, typically coaches that are coaching that. systems into young kids, by the way, in my eyes, are ones that have this fascination of wanting to be Pep. Yes. Exactly. And like watching yep. these coaches yep. and doing this and actually may have not had the experience of being a junior player themselves and understanding what a kid needs. Because realistically, honestly, my cheat code for being good is you should be touching the ball a thousand times like a day Yeah, as a, as a kid at the bare minimum. Yeah. Like where your social, you learn that 15, 16 is only when I really started understanding systems and football. And also, can so, I add this in? Can I add this in? Because I have this conversation a lot. Players don't need to be eight years old and be a center back. Don't need to be eight years old and be a striker. If they are a striker, get them learning how to play midfield because it's going to challenge them and make them better. Put them into a centre-back position. Make them learn that position because if they've conquered under nines and scoring 50 goals you know, a season, try and make them learn a different position and they'll become a better player over time. Uh, it's, a good, it's a good point. And I think it's an interesting discussion and we could go on about this forever. Yeah, but I think in general, one of the things that I say is as a parent or as a young kid, try to look for coaches whose passion is in youth development as opposed to them progressing their own coaching career. Because yeah, that's a really good point. If they're trying to progress their own coaching career, they're going to be judged off whether they win or lose. Mm. If their passion is developing kids, then they're going to be judged off how many kids play in the first team or how many kids they promote and that kind of stuff. That's I will I'm say, saying. though, just to be a bit of a devil's advocate, like it, like Rash said, in this day and age, um, if you go to somewhere like Barcelona or Man City or whatever, all the teams play the same. So they are basically grooming their players to be able to move up and already know the system before 
and that's why Man City is so good at it because you got people like, you know, uh, Bob, Rico Lewis, McAtee, and even Cole Palmer coming in and just being able to slot into the team because they know the system. Mm. But if we're talking young, young, then of course you want them to have the f- the fundamentals and the basics right before anything else. The yeah. difference, though, just with those examples, is they're training five times a week. Yeah, that's true. So can they're I getting just, both. They can do both with in Australian football. Yeah. You might do two or three sessions. Can I add so something in too? I'm sure it's for you guys. Uh, you would agree with me. Players, <clears throat> especially this for the youth players, players need to learn to get instructions and be able to f- perform it straight away. You run a drill, you want to explain it one time and that's it. At the at the top level, like I remember back at River, the coach will explain it once and you need to know what you're doing. And if you're stuffing up the drill, you're getting hammered. Uh, but everyone's different. Some no, people no, are visual, no. some people are audible. you got to oh, so manage the difference. 100% cheat code on this as well. The Argentinians were the best at it. Is when, when you're doing the drill, just go to the back of the line. Yeah. Watch everyone literally. else fuck it up or we'll see what's going on. And then when you're on, you're on. Yeah, that's the thing. Is you need to know how to understand, first. understand, and then if you're not understanding, watch and learn, because yeah. it's the it's the one thing coaches hate if you're stuffing up the drill. But a good coach will run the drill once as like a trial to to explain it, and then go by life. Of course, life, you, you do. Know? Your right. the other side, sorry, coaches that make the most complicated drills in the world right. far out. Come exactly. on, exactly. Yeah. Full full pitch, uh, one touch. <laughs> Frank's and All right, moving on. <laughs> If victory didn't have the fans, who would carry the league? Also, A-League needs to buy young stars, not keep getting these retired players on big salaries. I liked it back then because players uh, played for passion. Money ruined the sport a lot. It's now about branding. I think that's a bigger convo to be had about the branding and the money and stuff, so I'm not going to touch on that. But in terms of who would carry the league if victory wasn't around or they didn't have the fans... Um, well, it would it would be it would be, be, be Sydney FC, Sydney. Western Sydney and Sydney. Yeah, it'd be Western Sydney and Jets. Sydney and Jets, Gavin's team, and Vaughny. and Auckland. Bro, I love that. That's going to be so good. We are and playing retired, on retired pros with big money. Sorry to cut you off, but that's him. Yep, on big salaries. Yep, that is him. What carrying the lot? Any whoops? Question for Gav, the legend. <laughs> is that what I got called? <laughs> I've had an ACL Rico. All right, last ACL question of all time, by the way. I've had an ACL Rico and I've struggled to get full confidence in the knee. Turning agility was my greatest asset prior to the injury. What have you done to reassure that you uh, regain full confidence in your knee? Awesome pod, lads. Thanks, bro. Um, Minutes in the game, trainings, putting yourself in difficult situations. Rehab is is medicine at the end of the day. So you got to be smashing your rehab and you just got to be confident in your body. And putting yourself in situations where you're, where you're going to gain that confidence. I actually just read a, I read a quote the other day from Bill Belichick when he talked about um, players with preseason. He's like, you either, you either approach and accept you're going to have a really, really hard preseason and, and have the hard at the start or you have the hard at the end. So it's mm. a choice. You, you can't avoid the hard. So you either want to just do the work now and avoid the pain at the end, or if you don't do it, you're gonna one way you're gonna cop it. Amen, brother. Which one do you want? Thoughts about politics in the NPL. Seen many quality young players being overlooked by senior coaches who prefer to play for example, the president's son. Mm. This wrecks the mentality of the young lads that's working tirelessly to get into the team. How can we stop this? Um I don't <clears> think it's <throat> stoppable, it's everywhere in football. Yeah, I feel like you just not only here, everywhere. You're gonna, f- you're just gonna have to find a club that fits, man. Don't stay there if that's happening. If you genuinely think that, again, because Rash has spoken about this, if you actually think and know deep down and fully believe deep down that you are better, then you will get that opportunity somewhere else. But if you just stay there and say, oh, "I'm not getting played because of the president's son or whatever," then you'll never know. You- you'll never know. You'll just keep not getting played. Yeah, ultimately, it does happen. That's the hard thing. It actually does happen. I heard Billy Slater say something that I really liked in an interview and he said he talks a lot to his players about not not trying to win but trying to deserve and earn things. I think he's like, he goes, you could win in a, put a bet on a, a horse and you could win by accident. He's like, deserve and earn is, is like a very different way to approach life. So just try to deserve it, earn it. Um, and then, yeah, if you're not getting what you think you deserve, move on, try somewhere else. Got another question here, which I have a great answer for. <clears throat> um, 
I have actually lost the screenshot, but I know what it was along the lines. It was basically someone saying um, they'd played in the NPL for a few years and they sort of, they sort of stopped playing because they realised that it wasn't, wasn't going to work out, but they still love football. What advice do they have for getting a job? Or what advice do we have for getting a job in football? I would say, bro, first of all, you got to volunteer. Volunteering has given a lot of people jobs in football. Now, if you want to be on the social media side or whatever, volunteer at a local club to do their social media. Um, networking is huge. You played in the NPL, so you'll know some heads, whether they're coaches or people on the boards or stuff. If they can put you in touch with people for a little role here or there, start small, build your way up, cool. Another thing, if you want to get into coaching, um, go about it the right way, man. Do your badges. Uh, get experience, try to get a, a senior men's team at whatever level just to get that experience of man management and all that. If you're looking for more uh, more jobs overseas, especially there's there's sites on Google like footballjobs.com or whatever, Football Jobs UK, they literally, their sites are built for football jobs around the world. So you pick your region and clubs will put up, we need a kit man, we need a videographer, we need this, we need that. So if you're willing to move overseas, there's another option for you. Um, but yeah, I'd say the main things are volunteering, networking, and um, yeah, not being afraid to just do things for free, man. <laughs> I saw on LinkedIn when Arne Slot uh, got appointed by Liverpool, there was an advertisement going for Liverpool uh, set piece coach. Yep. Mm. How cool is that? Yeah. It's like seek full time. Yeah, I think yeah. LinkedIn's a great full time, show. bro. Yeah, full time drawing plays. Yeah, um, crazy. should NPL one senior teams have a limit? Uh, I'll start again. Should NPL one senior teams have a limit of how many players are over the age, say twenty seven, in a squad? And how to make sure a certain amount of players under twenty one play? Younger teams, more exposure to senior football, potentially more eyes from the A League. I think what he's trying to say mm. is. Should they have a limit of how many players over 27? Do you think that's a good idea? I would say, well, I, I made a video about this, how Korea do it. And I would say, if you haven't seen on my Lord yes. Marzi profile, TikTok, TikTok or Instagram, there's a video about what they do in Korea. And it's basically rewarding clubs that play or have players in their squad that are 21 or under. Yeah. And I think that's how you would do it. I don't think you put on that they have to. Um, but I think rewarding them if they do, I think is good. I think reversing that, not having, it doesn't matter the age, but having yep. a, a fi like, you know, five young players in every match day squad. Yeah, because then, minimum cause then the, league, the league has Cutting no off 27. It's not their well, fault they're 28, ways, right? you know what I mean? Yeah. Like how did they just turn 28 because life told them they, they yeah. can't play? Yeah, A-League should have the same system and I'm 28 now, so cheers, mate. <laughs> well, I just think like you need if if every single player in the league is under twenty seven, then you're going to miss out on a lot of key attributes. You're going to miss out on a lot of players. You're going to miss out on experienced heads in the change room. Well, that's the thing. Like me last year, I played with um, the Rick Abano brothers. I don't, yep. You boys know them? No. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I do. I played NPL with James, years I know very well. and F filler, thirty four years old. Helped me so much yeah. through all of last year. There you go. Yeah, and I don't think I don't think it's a good look if you're even if you're 18 and you are playing because the, they have to play you because of a rule. Exactly. I think in the dressing room you don't want to be that guy that's playing because you have to be playing. Yeah, no. Mm. You want to be yeah. maybe if it's slightly encouraged by rewarding them, then you kind of still showing that you deserve it because if you're good enough, you're old you're enough, enough. You know. Yeah. Hey boys, love the pod. I'm 19 now and I played New South Wales MPL. Oh, <clears throat> there's a question I wanted before. Never mind. <clears throat> um, what else we got here? Got a few more. Um, I'm 18 years of old, uh, age and my dream is to play professional football at any level. Do you have any non-stereotypical answers that can help me reach my goal? Thanks, guys. Define stereotypical. Deserve or earn. That's actually a good one. Deserve or earn. To be fair. Yeah, because it's like... It's non -stereotypical. It's like, what, what does a person that deserves to play at a professional level do on a day-to-day -day basis? Yeah, do I that. guess that's the first question you ask yourself. What you think a Ronaldo or what were they doing at your age? Are you doing what you think a professional footballer or an aspiring one would be doing on a day-to-day -day basis? That's the first question. If you're not doing that, then you gotta, that's what you're going to Yeah, I don't believe in... Uh, a lot of the quotes and stuff coming off the internet. Uh, that sounds very broad, but I'll explain what I mean. Like, 
<clears throat> like Rush was saying the other week, don't over like you can overtrain. Then you could do damage that you're not going to play pro. So like you've just again, when you know your body and stuff, that's when you can be like, am I getting better every day? So like, am I getting? Do I feel like I'm adding up one percent, two percent every day? Rather than just I oh, train hard one week, next week I don't. Blah 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 blah. I don't. That's pretty stereotypical, to be honest. Um, but um, don't compare yourself. I would say, stop comparing yourself because no two paths are the same. Stop looking at people on social media, like you know, young people that have made it because there's people that make it when they're in their mid twenties. But that just <coughs> it comes back to the point. If you want to be a professional, you have to start living like one Ooh. before you make one. You don't, you don't just become a professional when the contract's there. That's never happened. You know, you yep. Yeah, replicate. or vice versa. You don't replicate. make a pro and then... I actually played with a guy in, in Portugal who played first year and played in the under-20s World Cup. And he said to me, Gav, to get to first professional football, first division, is easy. To stay there is the hardest thing. Would you yeah. agree? Well, yeah, case in point. Would you agree? Yeah. How many players you know have I one season? I would say it's easy, but <clears throat> I'd say it's just as hard. Yeah. It's just like one season two, two, and then out. How things. many players actually do the whole longevity? Well, the, yeah, the, st- the statistical average of a career is less than like three, four years. Yeah. What would you boys say to your 13-year-old self? I'm 13 myself. Is that what you would say? No, no, no. He's 13, the guy. <laughs> 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 As a current 13-year-old, what would you boys say to your 13-year-old self? I know what I'd say. You're never going to fucking make it, you loser. <laughs> I'm joking. Oh. I'm, jo- <laughs> I'm joking. Because you were champion I'm back joking. then. I'd you get rid champion. of the fucking. I'd just say you're never going to make it, loser. And you were champions at that Yeah, I was ja- No, I would say that um, maybe professional football isn't for you. Um, oh, because why would you have liked to play professional football? Hell yeah. So but I'm too much. I got, wouldn't say that's your 13. No, nah, but so I'd be honest, bro. You're no, but I wouldn't. You 13 year old Jerog, nice. but you were not fucking saying that. Bro. The top. But then I would turn around lying. and say, I would turn around and say, you are going to be the top football potter alive. Yeah, but oh. at 13, I'd be like, oh, you're a sick cunt. At 13, you can change <laughs> your path, bro. What would you say? Quick one. At 13, I would say similar to what you just said. Everyone has different paths. Um, just keep. Going, mm. just keep swimming. Just mm-hmm. keep swimming. Don't worry about what other people are doing, where they're at, and their success, and blah blah blah. blah. Just narrow my journey. My. Do you know what I would tell myself? What? Become a runner. Run. Why? Because the game is you're a runner first, bro. You are an athlete first. You were. You need to be a cross code specialist, athlete type physicality. Didn't we just you say wanna... you don't need that in football on the other pod? No, excuse, I've never said that. No, I'm. I'm, sure. I'm like, and I'm also talking like some of the biggest leagues in the world. Like from an athleticism standpoint, particularly me, I wanted to play in the Premier League or the top four leagues in the world. Like, you've got, I you, naturally didn't have like the greatest running capacity too. So I always wish like maybe I did some little ats work or did some like so I had some of those change of gears. I had some of those the bigger engines. So for me, as I'm talking to my 13 year old self, yeah, you can be you a runner. Can. Okay. It would have changed my game. It's kind of hard because when you were the players you were looking at at that time weren't they athletes. They were Raquel May and Ronaldinho. Yeah. They so the game hours. changed while you were Yeah, out of fucking nowhere. Yeah. I got no answer. <laughs> yeah. What would you say, Gary? I don't know. <laughs> at Tell 13, me honestly, I would love to at know. At thirteen, what you would say I was on a plane with you living in Visha Bosch. Yeah, just can't so wait I don't think me. any thirteen-year-old would have done what I did. <laughs> just wait, just hold I'm, on. Hold me on, and, me, me life, and Rash <laughs> literally rocked up to Argentina and was put in the slums, basically. Yeah, so enjoy it now because you'll be playing state two when you're twenty-eight. I don't think like I don't know. I was um, just enjoying the ride. Uh, someone said, big big fan of the pod from Adelaide. Shout out A-Town. Um, we won't get into this one, bro, but we'll answer it soon. We, we've, If you go back and listen to some previous pods, we've ran through a bit, a bit of these. Um, the funniest off-field stories from our teammates, like away trips and stuff. We've said a few. For the pros, sorry, Jarogba. Who's the best passer of the footy you've ever played with? The best what? what? Passer. Yeah. He said sorry to me because I'm not a pro. Played what are you with gonna, is What are you going to go... Like, passer should be... 
passer. Okay, no, it's, passing is just execution, right? Yeah, just who's the some best people, passer? There's some guys with. that just naturally hit a ball clean so well. It's like passer. Um, Luke Bratton. Okay, Luke Bratton for Lord. Best I've seen in real life? No, no, no. Best you played with. Oh, I can give you better part off field. Okay, but best you played with. I don't know. So many runs. I don't know. Um, well, you got to say something. Karuska. Karuska. You know, I was actually. the last two questions. This is, this is totally off topic. But last pod we were talking about when I was at Sunderland, right? And we, I was with the under-23s. And we used to play cage all the time at Sunderland. And I couldn't score. I couldn't score. Two years later, the goalkeepers, um, international goalkeeper, who was it? Pickford. Oh, there you go. There you go. How crazy is that? Speaking of goalkeepers, I'm 19. I'm a goalkeeper at state one, two level. How much of a genuine shot would I have in England, Ireland, or Scotland? Now, they're very different. Ireland, the level in Ireland, stay in Australia. Well, they just play Gaelic and for free, don't they? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> stay in Australia. Seriously, if like... That's what I would say. Don't go try. I, I personally I, would. all the all the good Irish players have already moved to England by yeah. fourteen. Now, what's your chances of England or Scotland if you're a nineteen year old state one level keeper at the moment? Wow, <sighs> it depends where in England or Scotland. I would say that if you have a very good trajectory and you really look after yourself and train the best that you can, you might have a crack somewhere. But to be brutally honest, like, if you're 19 and playing State 1 here, I don't know if any clubs in England or... I'd say, I'd say to him, stay here in Australia. Yeah. Best players we've ever produced are goalkeepers. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Max Walter, Matt so Ryan. That's the best goalkeepers. players we've produced. Yeah, I mean... That's a great shot, Gavin. Yeah. That's a great... <clears throat> Hey, sometimes who gave like Zelko? I mean, no, he's he's hundred percent. The whole statement's right. But what did what was the last part? You said they're the best players we've ever produced. Best position. Oh, yeah, did best you say position, position or players? I've no, said players, players, but uh, I meant position. 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 Yeah, position yeah. based yeah. off players. Do you reckon that's because we have all these other codes, or is that just like I've said this? Mm. AFL players need to move into. I've spoken into about Ron Corey before as well. He was a seventy-year-old AIS goalkeeping coach. He coached them all. Yeah, he was a fucking genius. Hey, guys, wanted to know your thoughts on this. If you're playing in a lower le state league football, average team wage is 50 to 100 bucks a game and someone cops two yellow cards for tackles, should it be the player's responsibility to pay the football Victoria fine or should the club pay for it? Oh, great question. Oh. Um, I know... Nah, the M club. Yeah, club, bro. NPL level, though, you do get fines for yellows and reds, Especially which is hilarious, mate. right? Hey, this is a good conversation because <laughs> this happens in NPL change rooms, right? If you... Do a defensive foul and get mm. yellowed. Mm. Should you pay your fine That's or not? That's what I was going to say. Atletico Madrid. Uh, what's his name? Simeone. Uh, to win the, to win the against Real Madrid. Yeah, I don't know. Simeone. But yeah. yeah, Simeone's um, coach. Oh, um, not Llorente. Um Who was it, bro? One, yeah. They won the. They won the. Fucking yeah. Cup, um, I can't. I miss what you said. I know who you mean, but yeah, it'll come. Anyway, to me. Yeah. yeah. What about if your tackle is is helpful to the thing? That's what yeah. I'm saying. No way. Well, bro. also, and no the, way. going off NPL refs giving yellows, I'd question yeah. half of them. So, yeah, I've got a red card, paying, two bro. yellows for saying fuck. Unless you've really earned one. Hit, hit bad free kicks. Yeah. Some I get for breathing. Are you playing Churches League? <laughs> <laughs> Frankston Pines. Oh, Frankston Pines. Yeah, Frankston, Frankston Zebras. Pines sound like, how you've become what you've become is a fucking joke. <laughs> Jim, Frankston Pines could have only set you back by the sound of some of those And drills. you know what was funny about that? Is the footy team, the Frankston Pines footy team, would come across and watch our games and then punch on with the, uh, the opposing fans. That's hard. <laughs> That's hard. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Shout out Franger. Boys, boys, what are you, you guys free? You want to go watch the soccer? Yeah. Like, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> what the fuck, bro? What hey, boys, fuck? I'm 17 playing State 1 resis and the club's been relegated. Should I look to stick it out in State 2 or go test myself at MPL under 23s or have a crack at State 3 for seniors? Fuck, you're spoiled for choice, brother. Uh, <laughs> um, where are you going to play? I'm 17, like you've got to play. We get these questions all the time. Yeah. Bro, play, if most you, questions are like this. Get I, minutes on the board. Yeah, just play plays wherever you think you're going to play. If that's 23s, go play 23s, bro. You're, you're 17. very young. Oh, I, think it's, I think, like, in general, across the board, if you can get senior minutes, yeah, you can course. play at a senior we level. We don't know their levels. That's the only thing. Yeah. So, just generally speaking, I guess you've got to go off what you know of yourself. I'll do one oh, more. She's right. I reckon, senior yeah, senior first. football. There is some good heads, like coaches in the game that are that are coaching lower leagues. 
um, players you play against have obviously played in the NPL, dropping leagues. So mm. I would say try and stay in senior football. Mm. Yeah, man. Last one. Keen to get back into football after not playing for 12 years. What should I do to get back into it? Fitness isn't a problem. I'm super, super fit, but I just want to play again. Nothing too crazy, but I don't want to just have a stroll in the park either. Cheers. Shout out you for staying fit for 12 years. 12 years. Sounds like he hasn't really touched the ball, I'd say. As well. <laughs> he like he's ball. just running super, super fit. Yeah. Gavin, foot volley? Foot volley. Um, we're trying to get Douglas Costa down in his contract to come down to foot volley whenever he plays a Melbourne oh. team. But yeah, you've got to get the touch. It's all about the touch. Can't play the game without the touch. I would say that, again, people must laugh at me giving advice, but <laughs> you listen to this pod, so I don't know. Wait, this is a perfect person. What are you on about? This is a great person. For me giving advice? Yeah, yeah. 100%. For you're, me. Well, he, this guy's like asking where would he start if he wants to just have a kickabout. You're the one who's in the most kickabout Yeah, true, true. Now. Thanks, Jake. Out of everyone. Thanks, Slim. Um, uh, what I would do is... It sounds cliche, but it's about no matter what your age is, it's about repetitions and touches on the ball. So start small. If you're super fit, five-a-side won't be a problem for you. So get in there, get the touches in, get the shots back, wherever you – if you're, you know, playing a position to shoot. Or do something like futsal or, yeah, small-sided football to get your feel and touch back and then go do a preseason with a club and see how you fare. But don't – don't shoot too high, if that makes sense. Can I just can I just put this in? No. Is it more tiring playing cage or futsal than eleven aside? No, I don't move at five aside. Uh, really? If initially five aside's death, but then I after know, right? like five six weeks, I feel unbelievable. I feel like yeah. I remember great. playing futsal. You'd get the eighteen minute halves, and I'd be sweating. But if you're playing proper level futsal, I think you you could be onto something. But if you're playing five aside, I think it's not as there's not as like systematic movements. Mm. Because when you play proper futsal, it is non-stop. Mm. Yeah. Like, it is non-stop movement. Yeah. And it's, it's crazy. Oh, how bad is in the summer playing futsal in those factories? And it's, yeah, it's, 45 it's 30 degrees. degrees outside, it's 45 inside. <laughs> yeah. Lose weight. Fuck that. Yeah. Chest, All right. Yeah, we went for way longer than I planned again. Uh, but it is what it is. We love you guys. Uh, again, please... Hit the five stars on Spotify. I'm going to be so annoying to you all. Just do it. YouTube, subscribe to the channel and give us a thumbs up. We've got a lot of good stuff planned for you guys. We just need these little two, three second help of support or whatever. I don't hey, if don't you've know made it saying. this far, you are 100% a real one. So give us yeah, that Yeah, you're love, a booter, man. So go boot up. Yeah, you're a booter for life, baby. Yeah, toot it and boot it. Yeah. So want to thank you guys again for tuning in. Uh, we got some pretty sick guests coming up in the next coming weeks. So we're excited for that. So it'll be enough of us yapping about MPL. And uh, we look forward to seeing you guys next week. Peace and love up the Chels. Suited and booted. We'll see you soon. Peace, boss, best, lads. There you go. I didn't say pause. And while you, bro, while you were saying that last little spiel.